Thank you so much, many international colleagues for participating in this exciting course. EDEC Advanced Diagnosis Endoscopy course is an educational course of WEO, including both lecture with quiz and uh, case discussion. The theme of this time is IEE for lower GI tract, new evidences and te technologies. Today, we invited famous and active endoscopists from Asia and Europe considering the time difference. I wish that this course will be informative for your clinical practice from tomorrow. First of all, we will have opening remarks, Professor Sao Tajiri from uh, Tokyo GK Medical University. He is a WEO president elect and uh, past JGS president. Uh, please, Tajiri. Thank you, Shinji. Hello, everyone. My name is Hisao Tajiri, now president elect of WEO. Thank you very much for attending the ADIC virtual course, taking time out of your busy schedule due to the coronavirus outbreak. Last December, the ADIC course for upper GI took place online, which was great success. This time, the ADIC course is for the lower GI tract and moderated by Professor Shinji Tanaka and uh, Jean Francois Ley. I would like to ask to please listen carefully until the end. Well, we will organize the third Congress of WEO in 2022 in Kyoto, Japan. There are still concerns regarding the program structure and the Congress style. However, now we are working hard to make the Congress success. I hope corona pandemic will be converged by May next year. So please join end 2022 and see you in Kyoto. Thank you. Please go ahead. Thank you so much, Professor Tajiri. Uh, I will introduce first speaker, uh, Jean Francois Ray, uh, uh, W past president. Uh, topic is uh, overview of the IEE in lower GI. Please go ahead. Thank you, Professor Tanaka. Uh, it's a pleasure to be part of this uh, Congress and webinar. Uh, I need, I cannot pass me my slide. Okay. No, it's not working, Alexander. I will advance the slides for you, Professor Ray. Okay, thank you. Uh, so uh, I will make an overview of what we could expect by the timing of IEE in the lower GI. Uh, as you know, what is the current stage for the uh, endoscopic imaging? Uh, for next, for nearly 20 years now, we look about the improvement of endoscopic imaging. What for? What for is detection, high resolution scope. We are looking for minimal color chance, minimal relief chance. It's really what we learn uh, from our Japanese colleague more than 20 years ago. And the second step is characterization. The characterization is based on the analysis of superficial vascular network and the assessment of mucosal pattern. And this is, has been very important during the last 10 years with a new high resolution scope. Next. But what is important? What for? What for the patient? And with characterization, we, we have three, four different situations. First, in some time, we have a benign without malignant potential, no treatment. It's totally useless to remove uh, hyperplastic polyp in the rectum. And some other condition, we have benign with malignant potential, and this is endoscopic treatment. 
The third situation is malignant with an invasion limited to mucosa or submucosa. And it's where it's really important to, to see what we could have uh, endoscopic treatment or surgical treatment. And of course, with advanced deep invasion in the digestive wall, we send the patient to surgery. Next. This is a, uh, a, a book published uh, more than uh, ten, 10 years ago by uh, Niwa and Tajiri. And uh, this map already show at that time, you know, all the importance of various endoscopy possibilities from conventional magnify or endoscopic microscopy. I, I just had on this uh, uh, chart the new uh, possibilities uh, from uh, the last uh, two years. So we have uh, from Olympus, we take Xi and RDI. For Fujifilm, we have a BLI, LCI, and for Pentax, we have optical enhancement one in two, and also we have some Chinese trees. That is really what is important. In the past, we have differences technology from one company to another company. Now, basically, uh, the overall result whatever is Olympus, Fuji, Pentax, Sonoscope are very similar. Next. What is important? What is important is to have high resolution scope. Does it matter what kind of chip uh, or sensor are using? What is important is that Olympus, Fuji, Pentax, these, they are all the same kind of technology based on the filter. Uh, structure enhancement, files, eyes can are totally obsolete by the time being. And the next point is the optical magnification, whatever by zoom or near focus lens. And of course, we need to have a, a wider field of view. Next. The factor influencing image quality are numerous. You know, it's not only the quality of sensor. You could have a very high quality sensor and the overall result are poor because for the engineer, it's important to, to, to look about the, the 10, the 11 values feature in order to get the best uh, picture. And sometimes by improving one of the feature, you decrease the final image quality. Next. And uh, magnifying, magnifying is a, it's an important point. For many years outside Japan, uh, endoscopy are not used with magnifying scope. Uh, and it's why 10 years ago, uh, Olympus introduced a, a near focus. Near focus is very easy to use. You just press a button, but it's totally different with uh, the magnifying from Japan who ever use elevator and the ele magnifying with elevator never been very popular outside Japan and never been popular definitely in Europe. Next. But another po important point, uh, the important point is a screen, you know, I remember once upon a time, my, my old friend René Lambert, he said, I have a new scope but I buy uh, the, uh, the uh, TV set from a local uh, distributor. That is a mistake because, you know, we need to have a high resolution uh, screen uh, and monitor. And it is also part of the importance of the overall result. Next. If we look at you know this uh, uh, this chart from uh, from Olympus and uh, looking about detection, characterization, and staging, but in invasive depth, uh, when we use the the non magnifying scope that is uh, called the Exera in uh, in Europe in state, uh, we have clinical evidence uh, for benefits for detection and characterization. We have no uh, evidence by the time being about we you know staging. On the other hand, when we lose the Japanese uh, scope, uh, Lucera, uh, we magnifying endoscope, we have strong evidence for uh, the staging and depth of, uh, uh, depth of invasion. So it's very important what we have to look in the future to have more evidence uh, in both equipment. Next. 
But it's not only Olympus, uh, it's uh, Fuji, as you see the, this nice image from uh, White Light, LCI, uh, you, you have the, uh, uh, also the kind of NBI from, uh, from uh, Fujifilm, and you see magnification and crazy violet. Next. As you know, on the bottom part of this uh, uh, slide, uh, with this uh, BLI and magnification, you could see the, all the detail of the vessel, uh, enlarged, disrupted, and no vessel at all. But that means it's where the carcinoma is located. Next. Uh, the same optical enhancement for Pentax, they use uh, two kinds of filters. So you could have a, a blue, uh, green, and red filter, depending on the use. Next. And you know, their overall results are basically the same. So that means, you know, for all the endoscopic community, by the time being, whatever you are using Olympus, uh, Fuji, uh, or Pentax, or, or Sonoscope, we talk the same language. That is very a huge difference uh, in, comparing to the past. Next. And of course, this is a, a Chinese a Sonoscope with a, a, about the same kind of uh, this technology. Next. What we, the final result, the final result was the nice classification. And uh, Thierry Ponchon, Shinji Tanaka, and some other make uh, more than 10 years ago. It was the first time the West and the East talked together about classification. Because by before, it was very cumbersome and difficult for uh, Western endoscopies to understand all the various classification, Hiroshima classification, Kudo classification, Sano classification, and at least uh, all make uh, this uh, nice classification. I will not talk about GNET because some of colleagues will talk later on. But it was really important, uh, this uh, nice classification with a type 1, pure benign, hyperplastic, type 2, adenoma, type 3, uh, with a deep invasive carcinoma. Next. But you know, uh, I think it's the most important slide of my talk. Uh, when we look about colorectal cancer screening in colonoscopy, uh, we have to ask a question. Who is using device such endoscope for screening colonoscopy? Unfortunately, in clinical practice, uh, at least in Europe, in France, but I know in many countries, a few people are using the, this kind of equipment, even if you have a, a clinic, scientific evidence of the benefits. And it's the same. You know, uh, we have an under new NBI. I, I published first on NBI in 2005 on Barretos of Agus, and we are using in my new, new unit of NBI in routine colonoscopy. But a lot of colleagues and even some micro worker are not using routinely the NBI. And this is a huge difference between Japan, Asia, and Europe. And so uh, without using NBI, we are missing a detection, especially on the ascending colon, and we are poor characterization. And I think this kind of course, what we set up with uh, Isao Tajiri 10 years ago, is really to teach uh, our colleague to use all this marvelous technology because you know we have a we have a kind of a, a Ferrari car but we are driving like a poor Nissan car that is a totally uh, unacceptable and the consequence the consequences for the patient uh, two consequences first consequence missing polyp and and missing carcinoma and uh, on the other hand uh, useless ablation of hyperplastic polyp so. Uh, uh, a lot of colleagues, they saw colleagues, they don't characterize and they remove, even if it's a pair plastic poly. Next. So what we could expect, aside of the technology where we're talking uh, today, uh, it's the importance of uh, uh, artificial intelligence in the digestive endoscopy. But you know, for colonoscopy, uh, we have to talk more accurately, computer head colonoscopy. Because you know, uh, in in that case, the computer uh, help with a uh, set up with a live video a picture. But you know, if you don't have a, a, a good boil preparation, if you are not handling properly the scope, if you are a low rate of sickle intubation, 
this is a directly link with a human expertise. And so the computer cannot help. The computer is a, is a help if you are doing a proper and high skill colonoscopy. And of course, uh, with this computer head, I will talk later on, uh, we need to have a, a few as possible false positive. And it's important for detection characterization. Next. So that means we, on colonoscopy, what we could expect, it's a paper I published in Chinese journal, we could expect polyp detection and characterization. We could expect uh, invasion prediction for neoplastic lesion for better treatment and selection. We could expect mucosal inflammation and activity prediction. And of course, we could expect also some guidance for colonoscope insertion. Next. What is important with computer? You know, the computer, the, the endoscopist uh, could lose uh, performance uh, during the day due to fatigue, stress, or lack of experience. The computer is always fast, accurate, consistent, and it's really reliable human assistant. Next. And this is an example uh, to last week uh, with the uh, Olympus uh, computer system, uh, colonoscopy, and you could see in two cases, uh, normal polyp and magnification of a polyp with a near focus. Next. And on the worker, the very small polyp on the left side. I'm not sure without the computer, this, this polyp could be detected. And of course, magnification on the right side. Next. Also, this serrated polyp or this hyperplastic polyp. Next. So that means uh, the software will be developed by Olympus, Medtronic, Fuji, Pentax, and Sonoscope, or all the company will de detect software will be important for detection and characterization. That means all classification we are teaching will be easy to handle by the routine endoscopy. But you know, uh, this new technology seems uh, simple, but it's technically very cumbersome. Next. And uh, it's why we could expect uh, with uh, the computer head endoscopy, we could expect standardized and develop proper guidelines for use of clinical practice. That means people could use in clinical practice every day, NICE or GNET classification or any classification. We, we could also set up uh, ethical standard and security so that means, you know, when a patient uh, complain about missing polyp or missing carcinoma, the endoscopist had to show he used properly, not only the, the, the uh, scope, but also the computer and uh, follow the classification. And of course, it will allow to have a large scale prophecy uh, trial in clinical setting. So we could expect uh, that uh, image enhanced endoscopy with computer head diagnosis will be implemented in practice and not only in small uh, high quality unit. Next. And so uh, by, by the time being, uh, we have the importance of high resolution scope and image and ensonoscopy in daily practice. We have to teach as a various classification for colonic polyp. Computer head diagnosis will be with IE a measure technical improvement. And uh, what is important, uh, will the computer at colonoscopy be able to reduce IEE underuse? Next. And see you in Kyoto next year. Thank you. Thank you so much for your wonderful presentation. Uh, any comment or question from audience or uh, panelists? So, Professor Lei, now uh, AI is uh, progressing. Uh, what do you think the position of endoscopic skill in AI era? Endoscopic yeah. manipulation. I, I hope our colleague will use more AI because definitely uh, I, I'm traveling for 30 years in Japan. But you know, outside Japan, outside 
some unit uh, in the world, AI is not currently used properly by the lay uh, endoscopists. And it's why I think this ADEC course is important. And it's why the computer head diagnosis will oblige all our colleagues to use AI because we have a marvelous tool. Uh, all the uh, endoscopic maker improve uh, the uh, quality uh, of the endoscope, the quality of the image, the quality of uh, uh, image and endoscopy. But a lot of our colleagues are using, as they use a, a fiberscope 40 years ago. Uh, but uh, skill to get enough image to use AI is very important. So I emphasize that uh, with AI, we have to uh, progress scope manipulation technique. Yeah. Do you agree? Yeah, totally agree, totally agree. Thank you so much. Any comment from panelists? No? So I, uh, we will move to next speaker. Thank you so much, Professor Ray. Next speaker is uh, Professor Terry Ponchon. Uh, he is a uh, past ESG president, uh, Lyon University from Lyon University Hospital. Please go ahead. Thank you, Sinchi. It's my great pleasure to participate to this webinar organized by WO and yourself. I think it's a great idea. I will speak mainly, of course, as you know, about NBI, TCI, and I will focus mainly on what we, we speak, uh, we, we speak in, in Europe about, we say discard. Okay, so I will focus on this part and not on advanced cases. So first of all, some principles concerning NBI, TCI. Of course, NBI is quite uh, used now, it's quite popular, nevertheless, I agree with uh, Jean-François Ray, we can do better. With what like we have a, 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 a continuous spectrum with NBI, we are mainly using uh, uh, blue light. And why? Because blue light is absorbed by the vessels. So that's why we better see the neo vessels attached to a carcinoma. And also uh, uh, blue light is better absorbed by superficial part of the mucosa. So we better see uh, mucosal pattern. New technology from uh, Olympus does also concern TCI. In fact, TCI mainly does consist to increase uh, uh, or work on the texture and also on the color. So you see the difference in between these two pictures, which does demonstrate that we better appreciate the texture of the tissue. Uh, or in parallel, they also increase and the brightness, especially at the background, as you can see here on, on the right part of the slide. Yeah. So these are the two technology I will speak about. And mainly I will focus on detection and characterization, not staging. First, detection. Does NBI or TechCI helps to increase adenoma detection rate? In fact, there are many studies, but I will focus on two meta-analyses. The first one, uh, seven randomized studies, more than 3,000 3, patients. You see, adenoma miss rate and adenoma detection rate did not change using such technology. But in fact, if you analyze more precisely NBI, BLI, or LCI, the more advanced technology concerning chrome endoscopy, the difference is statistically significant. But nevertheless, you see adenoma miss rate. The difference is not so important. You see, P is 0.04. So just at the limit of the significance. Now, second meta-analysis conducted only with NBI, and which does include studies with second generation NBI. In fact, there is a difference, yes, but not so important, you see, between NBI and white light not so important. There is no difference concerning third generation NBI, you see, and this has been reported at the, at, at the initial part of the evaluation, but now using second generation NBI, which is brighter, in fact, there is a, a, an important difference in terms of adenoma detection rate. And this is not yet in the guidance, but maybe 
second generation NDI should be used as a gold standard for detection since the beginning of uh, the, the, the colonoscopy. In fact, it has to be discussed. Just uh, now, uh, this video concerning TICCI. So this is a patient with uh, uh, polyposis and we are in the rectum and you see a lot of small abnormalities, huh? reddish. And this is white light. Now we will move to uh, TCI, and maybe with TCI you already realize that you better see small reddish polyps like this. When polyps look reddish, they are better seen using uh, TCI, especially this quite flat lesion, which looks a little more, a little aggressive. So it seems that when the lesions are red, you better see them using uh, uh, TCI. Now moving to NBI, then you also will see all the small lesions and you certainly better see the uh, flat lesion here. So for me, it's of course difficult to compare on one video, but I have a feeling that I better see nevertheless with NBI in comparison to TCI, but TCI I better see than with white light. Now this case, you don't see so well using, uh, using uh, white light here. With uh, TCI, maybe there is something abnormal here. You see small, some vessels here. And here, you better see the mucosal pattern using NBI. So this is a, a, a sessile serrated lesion, very flat. And I have a feeling that if the lesion is very pale, you don't see so well using a TCI, except that maybe you can see the vessels. This is just my personal feeling. We don't we need more data. Parts of the lesion are difficult to see. Reddish part, vessels are emphasized. The question is that, uh, sh should these uh, uh, findings sufficient to increase adenoma detection rate, we need more data. Now, characterization of the diagnosis. In fact, there are two parts. My colleagues from Japan and from, from Asia, they know very well these two parts, two steps. First, to distinguish adenomas from hyperplastic lesions and to diagnose invasive carcinoma within adenoma in order to decide for surgery, uh, 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 submucosal dissection or mucosectomy. But in fact, I will focus mainly on the first part. If you refer to the NICE classification, of course, with the three types, one hyperplastic, one type two adenoma, type three deep submucosal invasive carcinoma, for this, you analyze three parameters, color, vessel, surface pattern. I will not enter into details, but in fact, when you distinguish type one from type two, you distinguish adenoma from hyperplastic lesion. When you distinguish type two from type three, you diagnose, you try to diagnose invasive carcinoma within adenoma. In fact, it is not sufficient. It is not sufficient because we know that there are some lesions which looks, which looks like hyperplastic, but they are evaluating like adenoma, such as cell related lesion. Maybe we need a kind of type one S or at least we need to enter more into details. Concerning type two versus type three, of course, type two B is missing. That means adenoma carcinoma invading the, the mucosa or the superficial part of the submucosa. But personally, I will not speak on this part. I will let, I will let Sano, uh, Yasushi Sano to speak about. I will focus on this part, just on the left part of the slide. This is the discard policy. This guard policy does consist to reject the polyp, but to don't send the polyp to a pathologist. Why? Because it does save money. And in fact, Hassan, in a cost effectiveness analysis, observed that you can save $25 per person. And it does represent a lot uh, at the level of a uh, US population, of course. It is feasible. There are many studies, but the first studies from in, in, in UK does demonstrate that when you use only optical diagnosis, and if you compare to the interval when you use uh, uh, pathology, in fact, the same interval was found after formal histopathology in 80, 98% of the, of the patients. So basically, we can use 
uh, this guard policy. We don't need to analyze all the polyps, theoretically. And it is safe because the risk of carcinoma when the lesion is very small, yes, or is diminutive or small, is very limited or not so important for, for, for small lesions. So we can promote this guard. At least we have to better distinguish hyperplastic from, uh, from adenoma. With, which mean, in fact, use initially chromoendoscopy with endocarmine, but now NBI is more effective than chromoendoscopy with endocarmine. We have plenty of that data, plenty of studies. I pull all the data and observe that the risk to miss an adenoma when you say it is hyperplastic is 30, 13% with chromoendoscopy and only 6% with NBI. So NBI is twofold more effective and chrome endoscopy for indigocarmine. So NBI should be used and no more indigocarmine, at least in West. And the comment, why? Because it's the vascular pattern. In fact, with white light and indigocarmine, you only analyze the mucosal pattern. But with NBI, you analyze the mucosal pattern and the vascular pattern, and it does help. If that, it has been demonstrated effective, in fact, this was the first publication with NBI, with, with a nice classification, and on fellows, so not so uh, well experienced uh, endoscopists, the sensitivity was quite interesting and even higher in case of high confidence, 95%. But nevertheless, it is discussed because you see that recent publication in UK observe that on a routine, okay, for all endoscopists, sensitivity is not so high. 80, 83% and for follow-up interval, only 73%. So the same NBI cannot currently be recommended for application in routine clinical practice. So this is a little disappointing. So G, British guidelines, uh, very cautiously, very cautiously. In fact, because the risks are medical equal if you don't analyze the polyp. So they say, can be used, you can use, Chromoendoscopy, virtual chromoendoscopy, but it has to be adequately photo documented and you, you, the endoscopy should be adequately trained and audited. So, so this is not so easy, especially if you want to audit the experienced endoscopist. If you I, I move more into details, concerning photo documentation, you need to be sure that the picture quality is obtained. It has to be first defined. You need to be sure about the picture storage for how long and how. And you need to train on audit. And ESG has defined a curriculum for optical diagnosis, but so far is not in a position to organize auditing and certification. So we are we are all pushing for 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 this guard. But now nowadays it's difficult for GDS to promote officially this guard. Now, the problem is, I come back to the problem of cell serial lesion. We, may, we, we frequently discuss within the group in charge of nice clarification about this problem. In fact, uh, um, uh, cell serial lesion does not look like regular hyperplastic lesion, of course. And this was the first publication, real publication, which uh, at least uh, observed four endoscopic predictors of cell serial lesion, so-called WASP parameters. In distinct borders, crude like surface, irregular shape, dark spots inside the cross. First of all, in distinct borders, you see the satellite relation. Of course, the borders are very difficult to analyze. In comparison, uh, the, the borders are very clear. Uh, Usually, usually hyperplastic polyp is very homogeneous. On the opposite, cesarean region looks more heterogeneous with different plateaus, but we, we say crude like. This is uh, uh, an adenoma. So this is, in fact, a, a, a lesion which is already a, 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 a moving, to, to moving to a cancer. So irregular shape, of course, even for large lesion, such like this one in the second. And expanded crypt Thing could be better than just dark spots, you see, because of the mucus, huge secretion of mucus. And this is very uh, specific to cell uh, cell lesion. If you combine nice and was distinguished cell cell lesion, in fact, the sensitivity was quite good. 
in this publication published by Gut by our colleagues from, from Netherlands, not so bad. But on the opposite, more recently, very low, 33% of sensitivity, and especially for diminutive cell cell lesions, they are diminutive cell cell lesions are very difficult to distinguish from hyperplastic lesions, are also very difficult to detect. And the clock like appearance is the more prevalent predictor. Now, XCI, for characterization, I already explained to you that we don't have data concerning the detection. And my feeling was we better see reddish part, but we don't see when the lesion is pale. Now TCI, no data so far. So I will have a quiz for you. So it's not a quiz related to knowledge. It is a quiz for me. I want to see if TCI is helpful for characterization. First of all, this case, this is TCI agents, which was uh, sent for us for resection. And these are the answers. Hyperplastic, susceptible elevation. So these are more or less the nice classification, but adapted by myself. One S, adenomal ovary dysplasia, 2A, 2B. This is the GNA classification or, and deep submucosal cancer, free. So please to answer. You have, I think, 30 seconds to answer. Huh? Not so easy, huh? I have, I have this feeling. Because I think in comparison to NBI, you don't see so well the details. You, you see the vessels, of course, but you don't see the mucosal pattern so far, so, so, so nicely. So answer. OK. OK, submucosal invasive carcinoma, OK, to, to be, OK, to be, OK. So we close. Can you, we move to the next? So uh, next slides. Sorry, because share my screen, but I cannot move to the next slide. Is it a technical problem? Ah, yes. You see, you better see the details, and you better see the mucosal. In fact, this one was not a to be. This one was still a 2A. Of course, uh, it's, it looks very, it looks a very aggressive here. On, okay, you, you can really suspect the 2B, but in fact, it was a 2A, just at the limit, 2A. Now, this one, I don't, uh, I don't comment the lesion, of course. Huh? I hope you see the lesion on the screen. Please answer. Okay. Ex excellent. Of course, this is the this is the answer. Uh, may I have the next? Uh, okay. Can you give me the possibility to move my screen? Sorry. Try to move to the next slide, but I cannot. Yes. So you see, you better see using an NBI. Yeah, in fact, yes, it was a cell cell television. You better see the, 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 the lesion and you better see the, the mucosal pattern. Now, this one, which one is quite not so difficult. This answer. It's uh, should be, could be, easy, could be easy, huh? could be easy, of course. But nevertheless, uh, you see the vessels. But as you don't see the mucosal pattern, you are a little in trouble. No? This is my feeling. So answer. Yes, but only 50% adenoma, huh? uh, low red dysplasia. Oh, no, of course, uh, yes. That's right. Uh, yes, I understand what it is not so easy. So move to my next line. I try to move to my next line. Sorry about this problem, but this is, I don't think it's a problem, not my fault. Next slide. 
need to get the market. So you see on the right, of course, this is an adenoma. And last question, last question and last quiz. So this is an adenoma. And so uh, uh, this is this is interesting. Please answer. This this is done using um, this picture is done using uh, of course CCI and IDOF. Huh? Edof, which is the, 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 the new technology from Olympus to 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 not to magnify but to to do macroscopy. This is not really a zoom. This is macroscopy, but with an excellent focus. So please answer. Deep mucosal carcinoma type three. <laughs> Seventy percent. But I move to the next, and then it is finished. Yeah, you gave me the next one. Next slide. Okay, sorry for this problem. It will need the, the control. Please. I want to show you the NBI because this is quite interesting. Please, next slide. I don't have a control on. Yes, this is my last slide. You see, you better see uh, the middle part, which was uh, will be uh, at risk. And in fact, you see vessels, you see mucosa. So this is not a dip. This is this is not a free. This is a two B. This one is a two B. Okay. And okay. So for me, it was interesting, but as I thought. I don't think NBI uh, is as good as, uh, uh, I don't think that TCI has a good NBI for characterization. Maybe to detect reddish lesion. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much you are, for your nice presentation. Uh, as for your quiz, honestly saying, uh, I feel that focus of uh, TXI and NBI are different. Very difficult to answer for uh, TXI magnification. What do you think? I, I, I agree. Um, uh, of course, so far it's difficult to answer because we don't have data, but I think the, the, the purpose are totally different. The purpose are totally different. I, I still think that but, but I'm sorry to say this. Huh? I'm still think that NBI. Uh, I see. I see more advantages related to NBI than to TCI. I'm just, maybe TCI for detection of reddish lesion, but I'm not so sure it does help so much about this. To master IE magnification, I believe that uh, in training we have to use uh, best picture adjusted focus. Ah, yes, okay, but you, 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 okay, but that means you complain from my focus, Senshi? No, I, I, no, mm -hmm. yes, you're right. But in a, yes, but you, when you zoom to TXI, it's difficult to obtain a good focus. You don't see so well the mucosal pattern. Mm -hmm. In comparison, you, 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 you use the same focus you try with, with, with uh, uh, NBI, everything is net. When you oh, use so, TXI, so in this meaning, it's not, it is we not should less. not apply uh, NBI classification into uh, TXI magnification picture. Yeah. Okay. I agree. Do you agree? I agree. I agree. I agree. Okay, I agree. I think. I think my my just last quick comment. I think TXI could be helpful in the stomach, mm -hmm. such as LCI, to detect. But this is just my personal thing. I will introduce one question from audience. Uh, how is different between LCI and the TXI? I think this, the, 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 the technology is it's totally different. I think the technology is totally different mm -hmm. uh, because TXI in comparison to LCI also concern the texture. And I don't think LCI analyze the texture. Uh, the texture, uh, uh, but of course it is an interesting concept to analyze the texture, but at the end, I don't know if it is helpful or not. At least we need to demonstrate it, okay? LCI, I think, does only consist to enhance the color, 
but I don't think it is the texture. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks so much. Next, uh, Professor Yoshida will explain about uh, FCI. I will introduce next speaker, uh, Professor Naosa Yoshida. He is uh, assistant professor of Kyoto Prefectural uh, University of Medicine. Uh, topic is uh, uh, IE, BLI, LCI, and other in low GI. Please go ahead. Thank you for introducing me, uh, Professor Tanaka. I recorded my video uh, for this lecture, so uh, please uh, prepare my video, uh, Alexandra. I will do that now, thank you. Mm -hmm. Just a quick notice, should the audio be too quiet for you, please adjust the volume on your own computer to make it louder. Thank you. Nice to meet you, everyone. My name is Naofisa Yoshida. First of all, thank you for inviting me to this wonderful seminar uh, Professor Tanaka, Professor Lei, and Professor Tajiri. Today I'm talking about IEE, BLI, LCI, and others in lower GI. Today's my agenda is uh, first, polyped characterization with BLI, second, polyp detection by LCI in LED and laser endoscope. Let me explain about BLI and LCI with laser endoscope. Laser endoscope was released in 2012. Two lasers, 410 nanometer and 450 nanometer, and the fourth bar illuminated the DI tract. Blue laser imaging, BLI, and linked color imaging, LCI with laser endoscope can improve polyp detection and polyp characterization more than WLI. Additionally, BLI magnification enables us to detect clear surface pattern and vessel pattern. Let me show you a movie of laser endoscope. This is a superficial region, 40 mm in size on sigmoid colon. LCI makes a region reddish. In BLI, polyp becomes Brownish. And using BLI magnification, you can detect the surface and vessel pattern very clearly. And this endoscope magnifies a region 135 times. And using these endoscopic findings, you can do accurate diagnosis. Let me explain a theory of LED endoscope. An endoscope using four color LEDs was released in 2016 to 2017 for United States and Europe. And in Japan, this endoscope was released in 2020. This system enables the performance of blue light imaging. This is also called as BLI and LCI using multi light it technology of LED light. These four cars are used in this LED endoscope. Compared to this, as you may know, uh, NBI is a new system. It uses five color LEDs like this. Let me show you another example of LED endoscope. This Marco is vessels. the same region uh, which I showed a movie about the laser endoscope. And the increasing number of region, 40 millimeter in size on sigmoid colon. As you can see, uh, BLI and LB, LCI improved polyp visibility. And I think LED endoscope's uh, brightness is more than laser endoscope. Using BLI magnification, you can detect surface and vessel pattern clearly. And this 
endoscope also magnify a region 135 times. Using these endoscopic findings, uh, you can do accurate diagnosis. This is a comparison between LED and laser endoscope. Regarding WLI, as you can see, uh, LED's endoscope is a little brighter than laser endoscope. Regarding LCI and BLI, the images are almost the same for LED and laser endoscopes. Now we are performing a multicenter study for proving this non inferiority. Let me explain the difference between NVI and BLI. Color is different due to each setting. The more important is the surface pattern and the vessel pattern are enhanced in BLI. It is sometimes good, but it is sometimes not good. In our previous study, uh, we compared uh, BLI magnification to NBI magnification. The design is 104 correct regions were observed both with BLI and NBI magnification using uh, NBI classification, which was called as Hiroshima classification developed by Professor Tanaka. The diagnostic accuracy rates of BLI and NBI were analyzed Additionally, consistency rate uh, was also analyzed. As you can see, accuracy rate was 74.0% uh, for BLI and 77.8% for NBI, so almost similar. And the consistency rate was 81.7%. It is very good. So, uh, according to this result, we concluded we can use various NBI classification for PLI magnification. Let me show you an example. This is a nice classification uh, made for uh, NBI observation. But, yeah, this classification can be used with BLI like this. And this is another classification uh, called as JNET classification for NBI magnification. But, uh, however, uh, we can use JNET classification with BLI. Type 1 indicates almost hyperplastic polyp or SSL. Type 2A is a finding for adenoma. It is regular pattern. And the type 2B is for high grade dysplasia. Uh, it is irregular pattern. And the type 3 is um, invasion cancer design. Uh, it is uh, a destroyed pattern. There are other classifications for BLI. This is a Teixeira classification made by uh, Dr. Claudio Teixeira in Brazil. Uh, it is for laser endoscope with magnification. Another classification is this, basic classification. It is for LED without magnification from Europe. And uh, this classification, basic classification, as validated by Professor Helmut Neumann, uh, it showed good result. How about this kind of tumor? Yeah, it is SSL. However, uh, nice classification and uh, genetic classification uh, is not so useful for diagnosing SSL. So for diagnosing SSL, I recommend these two endoscopic findings. ECO is an expanded crypt opening, and the TVV is a thick branched vessels. A report showed a lesion showing either ECO or TVV 
uh, is 70, 97% for sensitivity for diagnosing SSL. It is very good. So in our center, we use this classification for diagnosing SSL. And a region diagnosed as SSL uh, can be dissected with polypectomy. Regarding SSLD, reticulia, nodules, and depression are reported to be important findings for diagnosing SSLD. Dr. Sano previously reported uh, SSLD uh, showed nodule or protrusion in regions uh, very frequently. And about uh, magnification, they said kudos type 3L and type 4 pit as important findings for diagnosing SSLD. And also the size is important. Less than 5 mm and 5 mm, uh, there are no SSLD. Regarding BLR finding for SSLD, we recommend irregular vessels are a key sign for diagnosing SSLD like that. And a regular area uh, showed high grade dysplasia uh, in hematoxylin aerosin examination. Oh, my hobby is running, and I sometimes run overseas. Please join with me. Anyway, uh, next talk is about polyp detection. As you can see, BLI bright mode improves polyp visibility like this. Uh, for adenoma and for SSL, yeah, the visibility uh, can be improved uh, with BLI Bright. Previously, we performed a randomized control multicenter study for, for showing uh, the efficacy of BLI uh, about polyp detection uh, using a whole correction. And as you can see, uh, BLI group uh, showed uh, more uh, number of polyps per patient uh, than white light image group. However, uh, the demerit of BLI uh, was also detected. As you can see, uh, observation time was longer in BLI group than WLI. This is the uh, demerit of BLI and also NBI in a uh, poor preparation uh, condition. As you can see, uh, the residual liquid becomes reddish and it makes the view dark in poor preparation about BLI and NBI. And uh, as you know, 25% of patients receive insufficient bowel preparation. So we have to resolve these problems. Linked color imaging, LCI, is a solution for poor preparation. LCI is a kind of narrow band imaging in laser and LED endoscopes. It is brighter than BLI. LCI makes polyp more reddish and makes normal mucosa more whitish, so polyp visibility is enhanced. Additionally, residual liquid becomes yellowish. So we can detect a polyp even if preparation is not so good. There are lots of papers about efficacy of LCI for adenoma and SSL detection. First two papers showed the efficacy of LCI about ADR and SSL misrate. And the third report and the fourth report uh, will be explained later. And uh, in our center, we also uh, reported the efficacy of SS LCI uh, about uh, detection. Let me explain how to evaluate polyp's visibility. 
Olive's visibility is a subjective finding uh, by endoscopists. However, uh, we developed uh, this classification uh, named as polyp visibility score. Score 4 is uh, excellent visibility. Score 1 is poor visibility. Using this score, uh, we can calculate each polyp uh, about uh, scoring. And uh, using this scoring, we can compare two modalities uh, which has better polyp visibility. Let me show you an example of polyp visibility score. This video's visibility score is score 2. Fair visibility, it is a little difficult to find a polyp. Please find it under WLI. Again, it seems a little difficult. However, using LCI, uh, polyp's visibility uh, becomes score 4, excellent visibility, so you can find a polyp very easily. Polyp becomes reddish, so you can find a region clearly. And we previously uh, analyzed the polyp visibility between LCI, BLI, and WLI. And as you can see, uh, LCI's polyp visibility is more than WLI, like that. It is uh, proved by multicenter study uh, of end eight endoscopists in Japan. There are other reports showing LCI's efficacy. Uh, this is a report uh, from European group, a randomized tandem colonoscopy study. So they calculated polyp miss rate uh, for LCI and WLI. And the LCI group's adenoma miss rate was 11.8%. Uh, significantly less than a uh, white light images group, 30.6%. And for total colorectum, uh, a Brazilian group uh, reported uh, this randomized control study. They divided the uh, subject into three groups, WLI, BLI, and LCI. And as you can see, LCI's ADR was significantly more than WLI. Now in our center, we use additional 30 seconds observation with LCI after regular WLI observation for right-sided colon to prevent polyp miss. Let me show you a movie about this method. First observation is performed with WLI for 2 to 3 minutes. Please find a region. Maybe no region. So then, release insert uh, endoscope to CECAM. And the second observation is performed with LCI. In LCI, a polyp becomes reddish. So you can find a polyp like that. This region is flat morphology, and the size is 20 mm. In LCI, polyp becomes reddish, like this. And the BLI magnification showed irregular pattern like that. We diagnosed it as high-grade dysplasia, and ESD was performed later. This polyp uh, was missed in WLI observation. This is my take-home message regarding LED and laser endoscope. First, corrector tumors are well diagnosed with BLI. Second, polyps are detected more under LCI. So this is a quiz session. How do you diagnose this region? SSL, adenoma, high-grade dysplasia, or T1 cancer? The same polyp uh, is observed with BLI. This is uh, without magnification. This is magnification. So how do you diagnose this region? SSL, adenoma, HDD, T1 cancer. 
probably uh, BLI images uh, helps us to diagnose this region. Cancer is T1 cancer. So BLI magnification and BLI without magnification is useful for diagnosing this kind of region. Please use BLI more. I'm not. When I run, I try to increase public awareness for colorectal cancer screening. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you so much for your wonderful presentation. Uh, is there any question or comment from audience or audience? So, uh, Professor Yoshida. Yes. Uh, do you use only LCI in uh, screening uh, endoscopy, not BLI. Uh, uh, yeah. Not white, right? Uh, yes. At, at first, uh, we use uh, WLI observation, white light imaging, and then uh, for pre prevent polyp miss, I do additional uh, LCI observation uh, for thirty seconds. Oh, you don't so, use routinely LCI. I don't, I don't use it because LCI has uh, uh, very strong halation. So mm. it sometimes uh, uh, disturb our observation. So now we use second observation uh, of LCI. Mm. Thank you. Uh, time is limited. So we move to next content. So thank you so much. Thank you, Professor I, Tanaka. I will introduce next speaker, uh, Professor Yasushi. Hello, he's from. Hello. Uh, Hello. Hello. Uh, Sano Hospital in Kobe. Yes. He's a fellow of us uh, to have made nice classification and gent classification. Please go ahead, your presentation. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh, I'm very happy to uh, see uh, the faces on the monitor. And, and uh, so, I'm sorry, just a problem. Uh, I, I will go back, okay. So, uh, today I'm just focusing on the, uh, so JNET classification because uh, so already mentioned about uh, so sun classification. Um, and the, I have no sure why. And uh, this is uh, Jen. Uh, I think um, uh, I talk about the issue of the uh, nice classification and then uh, show you the uh, so usefulness of the genetic classification. And uh, uh, we talk about the sun limitation and quiz. And this is the most important uh, our uh, so. Um, achievement uh, uh, for the colonoscopy. One is a quantity of diagnosis, uh, so differential diagnosis, hyperplastic and uh, non-hyperplastic body. It's using uh, so JNET type one or type two A or a nice one or two. And uh, I think a daily practice, uh, so this uh, uh, quantity of diagnosis is major diagnosis. I think uh, during, uh, so, uh, colonoscopy, 25% diagnosis is a quantitative diagnosis, non-neoplastic or neoplastic. And the other is an estimation of the uh, uh, invasion uh, of some colorectal lesion. So it's uh, very difficult, but I think uh, so uh, the incidence of this uh, uh, situation is uh, not uh, frequent. I think uh, maybe in the daily practice, I think, uh, maybe less than 5%. And uh, we have to using, yeah, so, uh, so some uh, judgment uh, about uh, genetic type 2B or 3. Uh, so nice or nice 2 or 3, you know. And um, so Terry uh, already mentioned about uh, so nice classification. Uh, this is uh, uh, my it was my uh, great uh, memory 
And this picture was uh, so uh, one picture uh, taken in uh, so uh, Nice uh, in the France. So uh, Terry was uh, so invited us to the France, uh, and uh, this is a uh, uh, achievement of the consensus of the nice classification among the so international group. So Roy uh, Sojiki no Sensei and uh, so Terry and uh, Doug Dex and uh, so Brian Sanders as well. And uh, so since then, this uh, NVI classification uh, spreading uh, in the world widely. Uh, this is a very famous classification and type one uh, correlate with uh, so uh, hyperplastic or uh, so sessile cellular lesion. And uh, so type two uh, is coordinated with adenoma. And type three, uh, it's a little bit really, uh, so create with a deep some causal invasion and sent to the uh, so uh, surgical treatment. But uh, I think uh, so for uh, for Japanese uh, endoscopist, uh, we usually are uh, so uh, using a magnifying endoscopy more than twenty years ago. Uh, so for us, uh, type two is has some issue because uh, so uh, NICE is very uh, simple classification, but uh, uh, the type two, uh, NICE type two include various region. Uh, one is adenoma and uh, intramucosal cancer, which means so uh, TIS cancer. And uh, also uh, some cause are invasive cancer, sometimes a shallow and sometimes uh, so deep uh, some goza invasive cancer uh, is included uh, in this type, nice type two. So, uh, and uh, so uh, nice classification, the uh, rate of high confidence prediction rate is uh, still low. So that whole Japanese uh, endoscopist uh, not fully accept uh, this uh, simple classification. So that uh, so our uh, Janet team uh, so uh, developed uh, so uh, Janet classification um, and uh, we divided uh, so uh, simply uh, so divided in the nice two into two types of two A and two B. So uh, and Janet type one and Janet type three uh, almost same as a nice classification, but. Uh, nice two divided into two type in Janet classification. Uh, so the uh, I show you the uh, uh, so Janet classification uh, why uh, useful because uh, so uh, this is a validation study among the Janet uh, members. Uh, this is a web web based study. As you see the uh, so. Uh, Distinguishment of the neoplastic, neoplastic or non-neoplastic, uh, high confidence level is uh, 82 percent uh, if you use a Janet. But the, the uh, if you use a nice classification, the high confidence rate is much lower. And uh, so negative predict value showing uh, so more than 20 percent. It's acceptable. And uh, so uh, estimation of depth of the invasion uh, using a Janet. Uh, high, high confidence rate is uh, more than 70% and overall accuracy is uh, more than 80%. Uh, I think, uh, so it's not perfect, but uh, uh, a little bit enough uh, compared to the, so uh, nice classification. So that uh, in Japan as a Janet classification is uh, very popular. So uh, I show you the, uh, some, uh, this is a, uh, so published in the Digestive Endoscopy Japanese Journal, uh, e-learning video. Uh, so you can you can apply that this video uh, so very uh, simply, or you can see the uh, YouTube uh, this video. I show you the uh, so some uh, so uh, classification no two uh, B or two A classification uh, using this video. Please enjoy string three point five. A are regular vessel patterns and regular surface patterns. The regularity of the vessel is judged by focusing on the thickness and distribution of the vessels. Typical regular vessels can be described as well-ordered, reticular, spiral, or punctate in form. 
Type 2A refers to low-grade intramucosal neoplasia. This is a sessile polyp 6 mm in diameter. In magnifying NBI view, tubular and branch structures can be observed on its surface. Moreover, each microvessel has similar thickness and regular distribution, and is spiral in form. These are the typical findings of polypoid lesions for JNET type 2A. EMR was performed on this polyp. The diagnosis for this polyp is tubular adenoma with low-grade dysplasia. This slightly elevated polyp 5 mm in diameter has a shallow central depression, also called valley sign. We don't call this polyp depressed type 2C because the depression has a wavy patterned edge and doesn't fall sharply. By zooming in on this lesion, well-ordered reticular or spiral vessels with a regular surface pattern can be observed in the large portion of this polyp. So this lesion is classified as JNET type 2A. We sometimes don't see the vessels clearly at the central depression, but endoscopists should not confuse this finding as JNET type 2B or 3. This polyp was resected by cold snare polypectomy. The histological finding was tubular adenoma with low-grade dysplasia. The vessel feature of JNET type 2B is the irregularity, which means that the calibre of the vessels are variable and their distribution is not regular. In contrast to type 2A, the tubular structure on the surface becomes obscure or irregular. The most likely histology of these polyps is high-grade intramucosal neoplasia <laughs> or shallow submucosal invasive cancer. JNET type 2B findings may be observable in deep submucosal invasive cancers. Additional magnifying chromoendoscopy is recommended to determine the appropriate treatment strategy of JNET type 2B lesions. Here we present a Cecil lesion 8 mm in diameter with a depressed area at the center. While elevated areas at the edge show regular vessel and surface patterns, the depressed area at the center has variable caliber, irregular distribution of vessels, and irregular surface structure, so this polyp is classified as JNET type 2B. By staining with crystal violet, type 5I pit patterns in the depressed area and type 3L pit patterns in the elevated area are observable. This sessile lesion was removed by EMR. The histopathological views show well differentiated adenocarcinoma without any submucosal invasion. Okay, so um, this is a uh, so very useful e-learning video. Uh, and uh, you can see, I, sh I show the partial of this uh, so, uh, e-learning video, a total of 10 minutes. So please uh, so join the so digestive endoscopy or please search uh, JNET classification in uh, YouTube. So you can, you can see this video fully. Characteristic. Uh, sorry. And uh, so, uh, that the genet has some limitation. Uh, you need a magnified endoscopy. I think a near focus endoscopy is uh, acceptable. And uh, so chroma endoscopy is recommended to the lesion showing a genet 2V. And uh, so, so, uh, so that the so knowledge of the uh, pit pattern, kudos classification diagnosis is still required. And one issue is there is no uh, strong evidence uh, so uh, in uh, so genet type one uh, for the uh, diagnosis of the uh, serrated lesion. Uh, so uh, it's a genet type one works uh, so uh, well uh, in the diagnosis of serrated lesion. Maybe in my uh, impression, uh, we need to include some, not only genet, but also some features uh, like uh, so, cloud surface like uh, so, uh, so mucus cap or something. Uh, anyway, so this is uh, my summary. So let's enjoy the uh, so case. I show you two cases. Uh, case one is, uh, this is a female uh, melana. Uh, uh, sorry,
大丈夫ですか<笑> ?OK、uh,。So, continue.What type of this endoscopy morphology classification is the hardest classification?Let's、uh, vote.2A、uh, or 2C, 2A or 1S or 1P or LSD granular? OK。Uh, show me the answer? あ、OK。あ、OK、OK。あ、OK。Some、um, main、uh, answer is LST granular. So, I'm sorry.、Uh, maybe a picture is not so、uh, good.、Uh, this is a、uh, 1P. I'm sorry.、Uh, maybe、uh, so uh, more, more uh, full, uh, low, low power view is、uh, so required. Sorry. But anyway, so I, I skipped this one. And question two is、uh, what is the diagnosis in the genet classification, left side and right side, right? Left uh, uh, one is、uh, question,、uh, so answer one is、uh, left is uh, uh, genet 2A and right is genet 2B. And、uh, answer two is a、uh, right is genet 2B and left side is a、uh, genet 2A, which is a correct answer. あ、I'm sorry. <笑>まあいいや。まあ。OK。あ、Yes, yes, yes. OK, OK. I'm sorry. This... Anyway, so、uh, you can see,、uh, so left side,、uh, very smooth、uh, edge of surface structure, like a branch,、uh, showing some branch and some tubular like, but the edge is very smooth. And you can see the、uh, bezel, brownish bezel as well. But compared to the left side, right side is、uh, showing a surface structure slightly、uh, so irregular, and the bezel as well、uh, showing uh, some uh, you know,、uh, brownish irregular bezel. So, right side is uh, so, uh, type 2B. And histology、uh, showing、uh, so left side showing、uh, intermucosal cancer, adenocarcinoma. And the left side is adenoma, tubular adenoma. So、uh, this is uh, so very uh, so relatively uh, uh, so correlated with the surface structure、uh, of this region. Okay, I'll show you a second uh, case. Uh, this is a female uh, patient. Uh, this region located the、uh, sigmoid colon and the feet positive. Okay, what is your endoscopic morphological classification? 2A. Or 2C, 2A, or 1S, or 1P, or LST ground up. Please vote. Okay. Oh, wonderful.、Uh, yes, exactly. This is、uh, so, as you see, Uh, the region is uh, uh, so marked here,、uh, so showing a depressed area. After injury, Calvin died,、uh, so this region showing uh, so depressed uh, futures uh, like uh, so demon. <laughs> And、uh, I apply, so that I, I apply uh, so uh, NBI, I show you video. With Zoom、uh, around the so depressed area. Okay. So,、uh, what is your diagnosis? Janet,、uh, type A, 2A, or 2B, or 3? Okay.、Uh, show answer. Okay. Okay. Mostly, uh, so uh, type three.、Uh, I think some doctors uh, choose uh, so uh, voting、uh, in type two B. I think so.、Uh, this area, 
this area showing uh, some irregular bezels and uh, but this area uh, lost uh, the morphology and uh, so bezels as well. So that uh, most of the area uh, showing uh, amorphous and uh, so loss of the uh, bezel. So I diagnose type three. Sorry, uh, this is uh, my final uh, video. Uh, this is uh, after a uh, staining using a uh, methylene blue and uh, so crystal bio double staining. Uh, this scope is uh, so uh, endoscopy. Okay, so what is uh, your diagnosis? Okay, it's finally, uh, yes. Uh, please show me uh, the, oh, okay. Okay, 90%, uh, so, to uh, so so uh, deep some goza in base of cancer. Yes, that's right. Uh, as you see the, uh, so this uh, pit, uh, I think uh, showing uh, some, yes. This the surface, is future is uh, showing an irregular pit. So kudo senses pit button. So a uh, cluster that's type five, type five uh, I, irregular and severe uh, irregular. <coughs> So uh, finally, uh, this region uh, so showing uh, so some goes a deep invasive cancer. I'm sorry, this region is uh, less than 10 minutes in size. I apply the ESD, but uh, of course this region uh, embed to some goes. Uh, so uh, the, the patient sent to the surgical rejection. And uh, so this region showing uh, so invasive cancer, SM2, LY positive, and uh, uh, one lymph node metastas metastasis positive. So uh, I think that, that's all. Thank you very much, your kindness and attention. Thank you so much for your nice presentation. Some sense, please show you NVI magnification of case two once more. Uh, sure, right. Okay. Uh, magnif this one, okay. One more previous. Uh, one more previous, all right. Uh, this, this, uh, this, this, this is one, okay. This one. Okay, I'll show you a uh, video. Oh, no, no, next, 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 please. Next, please. Huh? Next, so. not a video, not a video, still image. Uh, still image, this one? Still, no, NBI magnification. This one? No? Mm, mm, not I, this one. I think that's oh, all. More large one, more large one. Okay, yes. this one, mm, uh, mm. okay. I have a question. I think uh, the first area uh, contain blood or was so we cannot uh, uh, determine the NBI magnifying findings. Mm. You think so? Uh, uh, some possibility of the uh, some yes uh, mucus uh, on the surface or was. Uh, because uh, yeah. you do carefully the uh, so you can see the uh, bezel, but uh, very unclear. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, some possibility is a uh, was uh, some existence of was in the surface. Yes, that's right. But yeah. uh, was also uh, frequently. Uh, so uh, we are observing in uh, some cause of invasive cancer. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Uh, so. To master pit pattern diagnosis is a shortcut way to understand the uh, NVI surface pattern. Do you agree? Yes, yes, completely, I fully agree, yeah. So pit pattern and diagnosis is very important. Mm. Finally, please show us the knock on pitfall to master JNET classification for device. Uh, yes, uh, uh, so I, I said, so type one increases cess isolated and the hyperplasia. It's a, a further investigation is required. And the type two B contains a many, uh, uh, so some cause of invasive cancer and uh, intermucosal cancer. So we apply the, so uh, crystal violet or co and uh, we learn and we 
need some knowledge about the pit pattern diagnosis still. Thank you so much for your nice presentation. Thank you very much. We will move to the next presentation. Uh, I will introduce the next speaker, Professor Silvia Sandurian uh, from uh, Maastricht University Medical Center in Netherlands. She also affiliated to Academy of Endoscopy, California, US. Uh, please go ahead with your presentation. Hello, everyone uh, from Maastricht. Thank you very much, Professor Tanaka, for the introduction. It is truly an honor and a pleasure to be part of this WIO course. And thank you very much to the board for the kind invitation. Also, special thanks to my mentors and collaborators. In the next minutes, I will discuss about the image-enhanced endoscopy for laterally spreading tumor the teacher's perspective, and here is my agenda. Over the past decade, we have learned that the laterally spreading tumor is an important contributor to post-colonoscopy cancer because these lesions are more difficult to detect and resect, and a significant proportion contain high-grade dysplasia and cancer at diagnosis management of the laterally spreading tumors represents an important, a critical factor for the screening outcomes and an important part of the endoscopist education. So how do we improve this? Professor Sanuliano, yes. um, can you please share your presentation? Okay, but I have shared already. Is it shared now? Not yet. Let me pull it up for you. I think I have to enter again because I don't see where I can reopen it. I think it's double opened right now. Uh, so I will re-enter. Alexandra, is it okay? Yes, please do so. We will be waiting for you. Sorry, I apologize. Share screen again. Share. Okay. Is it okay now? Wonderful, thank you. Okay. So the term laterally spreading tumor refers as we know to the laterally superficial growth of lesions, at least 10 millimeter in size, as opposed to the traditional polypoid upward growth or depressed downward growth. And this meta-analysis shows that the vast majority of the laterally spreading tumors are benign lesions. Overall, approximately 9% of the laterally spreading tumors contain submucosal invasion at diagnosis, but the risk differs by endoscopic subtype. And this is an important figure. It shows that the laterally spreading tumor classification, also known as pragmatic classification, allows to stratify the risk of containing submucosal invasion. So the laterally spreading tumor granular homogeneous subtype in blue are the most common subtype. Approximately one third of one LSDs are granular homogeneous subtype, but they have the lowest risk to contain submucosal invasion, less than 1%. In contrast, 
the LSD is not granular pseudo-depressed subtype in red are less common, only 5% of the total, but they have the highest risk to contain submucosal invasion. One in three LSTs non-granular pseudo-depressed contain submucosal invasion at diagnosis. We have also learned from our Japanese colleagues that increasing size is associated with greater risk of containing submucosal invasion in LSTs, a finding which has been recently confirmed in Western studies. In this study, the risk of submucosal invasion in LSTs non-granular pseudodepressed subtype was high with more than half of the lesions between one and two centimeter in size containing high-grade dysplasia or T1 cancer. An important finding comes from the Japan polyp study, which showed that even after a two-round baseline colonoscopy, non-polypoid colorectal neoplasms and uh, LSTs non-granular in special, may be detected at follow-up colonoscopy, confirming that these lesions play an important role in the development of post-colonoscopy cancer. And another warning is this study, which shows that in LSTs non-granular subtype, the non-lifting sign may occur more often than in laterally spreading tumors granular subtype, owing to a flat disposition of the muscularis mucosa as opposed to a wavy disposition in the laterally spreading tumor granular subtype. There are several gaps in our understanding of the laterally spreading tumors and misconceptions which we need to address. First, large sessile polyps are not LSTs because the height of these lesions is greater than half of the diameter. LST definition is not a histologic definition, but rather a description of a growth pattern. LST definition includes adenomas, sessile serrated adenomas with dysplasia, carcinoma in situ, and T1 cancer. We also have gaps in our understanding of the terminology. What is the difference between nodules and granules and crevices? And what is the difference between a depression and pseudo-depression? And what is an LST of mixed pattern type? How to measure size of LSTs? How to assess the risk of submucosal invasion? And most important, how to use this knowledge in order to assess the best therapeutic approach? Recently, Professor Sutekno and a group of international experts proposed the ACE algorithm for endoscopic diagnosis and management of large colorectal neoplasms, where the acronym ACE stays for appearance, classification, and enhanced endoscopy. This paper is impressed by gastroenterology. This is a simple and teachable concept, which I uh, advise you to review and uh, adopt in training. So, let me go into detail. When we detect a laterally spreading tumor, the first step is to describe its general appearance, the helicopter view, location, size, and especially concerning features like converging folds towards the lesion, expansion, depression, a nodule, or irregular surface. All these signs are associated with increased risk of deep submucosal invasion, and we teach our trainees that endoscopic resection of these lesions is not curative. So the best they have to do is to take a targeted biopsy, place the two, and refer to the surgeon. The next step is classification of the lesion according to the endoscopic classification, the pragmatic classification, which helps us to stratify the risk of containing submucosal invasion. And the last step is enhanced endoscopy, the most important because it helps us to confirm the diagnosis. 
So let me show you an example how to apply the ACE algorithm in practice. First, A from appearance, so we describe location and size of the lesion using spatial recall techniques, compare and contrast techniques in order to create better mental representations for our trainees in order to facilitate the transfer of knowledge. And the next step, classification of the LST, again, using a pragmatic classification, we should keep in mind the lowest risk to contain submucosal invasion in granular homogeneous subtype, followed by um, non-granular flat elevated subtype, um, granular nodular mixed subtype, and the highest risk, again, in non-granular pseudodepressed subtype. We also train our um, young endoscopists to recognize which part of the lesion uh, contains the worst histology, because this should be resected on block. LST classification is not always simple and straightforward to apply. Good air insufflation is essential to improve the visualization of the lesion. And sometimes submucosal injection can additionally help to better visualize the lesion. We call it the umbrella sign because it's like opening this nice umbrella to see its design. LST classification is also not always perfect and some cases are just difficult to classify in one of the four categories. I will come back to this in my quiz. The last step, use of enhanced endoscopy to confirm the diagnosis. And as the previous speakers mentioned already, we need full high definition systems from colonoscope to processor, monitor and cabling. And ideally we need magnifying colonoscopes, but as we know, magnifying colonoscopy is not yet standard of care in the West. We need contrast agents, but again, crisial violet is not available in the West. The most important factor is however, additional training. And we don't have any excuse not to provide it. So image enhanced endoscopy for laterally spreading tumors uh, has a learning curve and we need sufficient exposure in order to predict the diagnosis with high accuracy. We call it deliberate practice with feedback in mastery learning language in order to achieve the minimum passing standards. And Professor Sano explained us the Japan NBI expert team classification. I will continue with more example to illustrate how to apply the ACE algorithm. This case for which I would like to thank my colleagues at National Cancer Center in Tokyo shows a lesion with clear signs of deep submucosal invasion, deep depression, ulceration, irregular appearance, all associated with increased risk to contain submucosal in deep submucosal invasion. Next step, the classification. According to the Paris classification, this is a 01S2A lesion. And according to pragmatic classification, it's an LSD granular nodular mixed subtype, which has on average 10% risk to contain submucosal invasion. The next step, enhanced endoscopy, shows a type 5A severe irregular pit pattern corresponding to the nice type three and genotype three subtypes. This is a lesion which contains most likely deep submucosal invasion and the best therapeutic approach would be surgery. Indeed, surgery confirmed um, a PT1 and zero adenocarcinoma with deep submucosal invasion and vascular invasion. And the next case, case from our own experience, this is a lesion which does not show any concerning features, as we can see. The classification shows a laterally spreading tumor, non-granular flat elevated subtype with a low risk of submucosal invasion of on average 5%. And enhanced endoscopy shows regular surface pattern, tubular structures, regular vessel pattern, also, optical enhancement confirms this. 
So this is a nice type 2 or a genetic type 2A uh, lesion for which endoscopic mucosal resection, even piecemeal, is a good therapeutic approach. Recently, the Japan Gastroenterological Endoscopy Society guidelines proposed this framework for the management of the large colorectal neoplasms. Building upon this knowledge, we train our trainees that therapeutic decisions should take into consideration three categories of factors, lesion dependent factors, the ACE algorithm, which we have already discussed, patient dependent factors, age, comorbidities, patient's preference, but most important is endoscopist's experience and skills and availability of materials, team and logistic issues. So to summarize, how to apply the ACES algorithm, where S stays for therapy. This algorithm provides a systematic stepwise approach to the management of large colorectal polyps. Again, starting from uh, assessment of the appearance in white light endoscopy with focused on concerning features, followed by classification, using international classifications and last step enhanced endoscopy to confirm the diagnosis. All these three steps provide evidence for uh, choosing the best therapeutic approach. The safety of resection is very important and is based on this um, elaborate approach. How to apply the ACES algorithm for management of the laterally spreading tumor, same approach as I have mentioned. While laterally spreading tumor granular homogeneous subtype and some non-granular flat elevated with low risk to contain submucosal invasion uh, are amenable for endoscopic resection using EMR, even piecemeal EMR, the laterally spreading tumor non-granular pseudo-depressed type with a highest risk to contain submucosal invasion should be resected on block by ESD or surgery. This brings me to the conclusion. ACES algorithm is a simple and teachable concept, and we should consider using it in training the young generation of the endos of endoscopies. It's actually one trainee at a time. The combination between appearance, classification, and enhanced endoscopy-based diagnosis allow to stratify the risk of submucosal invasion, guiding our therapeutic approach. And although not perfect, the current classifications help to create better mental representation to enhance the transfer of knowledge. The keys to success for the young endoscopists are careful observation, learning from experts, developing high performance skills and deliberate practice with feedback, and also make the pathologist your best friend. At the end of the day, we should remember to always pass on what we have learned. Thank you very much for the opportunity to present in this exciting meeting. Alexandra, can we share the first um, um, quiz? Please. Please go ahead. Yes, so uh, please order these lesions, which are of similar size, by increasing risk to contain submucosal invasion, which is the correct answer, which is the sequence from least severe, least uh, lowest risk to the highest risk. Can we have the poll? Okay, right answer. Very happy to see that indeed. 
lowest risk for granular homogeneous, highest for the pseudo-depressed uh, subtype and intermediate risk for the others. Can we move to the next quiz? What is the endoscopic subtype of this LST? Can you please move to the next slide, Dr. San Lugano? Yes. Um, it turns that I can't move it further. It's stuck to quiz. Let's try it again. It's stuck. Can you advance, Alexandra, this uh, last quiz? Can you try again? Advancing, perfect. Yes, no. now it's okay. What is the endoscopic subtype of this LST? All four pictures belong to the same lesion. Yes. The correct answer is indeed D, that's correct, is a mixed pattern which combines a non-granular flat elevated component with a granular homogeneous subtype. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your nice presentation. Uh, you taught us the importance of combination diagnosis of LST subtype and uh, IE or pit pattern diagnosis. Uh, unfortunately, time is 10 minutes behind. So I'd like to move to next presentation. Thank you so much, Sylvia. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I will introduce next speaker, uh, Professor Han Monchu from Taiwan. Uh, he is a uh, uh, professor of National Taiwan University. His topic is uh, IE characterization for neoplasia. Please go ahead with your presentation. Okay, thank you very much, Professor Tanaka's introduction. So uh, it is my great pleasure to attend this uh, wonderful meeting. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the IEE characterization for neoplasia. So this is the outline of my today's talk, including microscopic and microscopic characterization of corrector region, technical tip of applying IEE, and how to predict invasion depths in cancerous region, and followed by a quiz. So the first part is the microscopic characterization. There are three distinct pathways of corrector carcinogenesis. The neoplasm that progress via this pathway are distinct in biology and the natural course. Therefore, it is essential to understand the endoscopic appearance of those lesions at their benign or early stage. It is sometimes difficult to specify different type of neoplasm, but it is important just like differentiating which kitten will eventually become a beast. <laughs> Using the Paris classification, we can roughly divide lesion into polypoid and non-polypoid lesion, and the latter could be further subdivided into flat and depressed lesion. This is very important. A different morphology carry different risk of advanced histology and the natural course. Previous study has demonstrated that non-polypoid neoplasm carry higher risk of advanced histology compared with polypoid one, and the depressed lesion has extraordinarily higher likelihood of having high-grade dysplasia or even invasive cancers. 
Accordingly, the treatment should also be tailored based on their pathological features such that we can maximize the effectiveness of treatment. Take laterally spreading tumor, the LST, as an example. There are four different microscopic subtypes, LST homogeneous, LST nodular mix, LST NG, flat elevated, and pseudo depressed, and their pathological features are different. So this study has already introduced by uh, Sylvia, and this is a very uh, beautiful study, uh, meta-analysis re revealing that the LSTG homogeneous type has extremely lower risk of invasive cancer. Therefore, piecemeal EMR is justified. In contrast, LSTG with large nodule or LSTNG, especially the shoulder depressed type, have much higher risk of invasive cancer and very frequently multiple co invasion. Therefore, M block resection with ESD should be considered. Nextly, I would like to talk about microscopic characterization using the IEE modality. Here are some key points step of characterizing colorectal lesion, including differentiation of neoplastic from non-neoplastic and the differentiation of cancers from non-cancerous lesion or to identify high-risk histology and the prediction of invasion depth, especially for those with suspicious cancerous change. Electron microscopy study has demonstrated that the microvascular architecture of normal mucosa, benign adenoma, and the carcinoma are completely different. And this provides opportunity for diagnosis by visualizing capillary network using the IEE. In ice classification, there are three aspects for characterizing colorectal region, color, vessel, and the surface pattern. This slide shows the appearance of different type of nice classification, which most of you have been familiar with, and as some previous uh, speaker have already uh, mentioned. Previous meta-analysis demonstrate that MBI is very accurate in differentiating neoplastic from non-neoplastic lesion. And however, its utility in diagnosing high-risk histology or predicting invasion depth remains unclear. While using nice classification, magnification is not applied. Therefore, type two contain wide spectrum of neoplasm, including benign neoplasm, um, high grade dysplasia, or even invasive cancers. Therefore, it is not so accurate in guided treatment. The second limitation is it low inter-observer agreement. It was reported that chroma endoscopy with crystal virus staining had much higher inter-observer agreement than using nice classification in predicting high-risk histology. The JNS classification is therefore developed to solve this problem. JNS type one is equivalent to nice type one, but in this classification, type two was subdivided into two category, 2A and 2B. Legion with type 2A are mostly benign adenoma, and those with 2B are more likely adenoma with high grade dysplasia, carcinoma in situ, or superficial T1 cancers. And the type three is equivalent to nice type three, which is representative of invasive cancer. Those endoscopy who are familiar with kudos pit pattern may be much easier to master or get familiar with this JNS classification system because JNS 2B is corresponding to kudo type 5I and the type 3 is corresponding to type 5 NP pattern. And this slide show the JNS type 1 and this is type 2A another 2A. So you can see very clearly uh, the, reg uh, the regular uh, capillary network and uh, 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 which surrounding the oval or tubular structure on the surface of the lesion. And uh, this is another example. And uh, this slide showed the type 2B. So you can see the torturous and uh, uh, irregular and uh, uneven diameter of the vasculature. And you can also see uh, uh, the uh, irregular surface pattern. 
And uh, this is another example of uh, GNS type 2B. And you can see type 2B uh, was located at the depressed area. And uh, this is the type 3. So uh, you can see the amorphous surface pattern and also the interrupted uh, vasculature. And this video clip show how a region look like by using different IE modality, especially using chroma endoscopy. This non-polypoid region is actually a depressed one, which is most clearly visualized after indigo carmine dye spraying. Nextly, I would like to talk about the technical tip for applying IEE in colonoscopy. Proper setting is important for visualization of clear microvascular structures. In colorectum, color at level three and the enhancement at A8 are most favored setting. This slide shows that the microvascular structure are most well visualized uh, at the enhancement level A8. And this is another example showing the different appearance of the same lesion by different setting. Along with the popularity of digital IEE, such as MBI or BLI, many people may think that dye spray is no more necessary, but is it worthwhile to mention that sometimes flat lesion under white light endoscopy is actually a depressed lesion, which could be only well visualized after dye spraying. It is therefore not uncommon that morphological diagnosis is overturned after dye spraying. In case JNET type 2B capillary pattern is visualized but still difficult to determine the invasion depth, we may apply staining method, which could help better visualization of CUDO type 5P pattern. While applying this technique, we do not inject the dye directly into the working channel, but because the visual, uh, visual field will become very large if too much crystal virus is sprayed and the stain on the lesion and the surrounding mucosa. We use the roundish tip catheter to diminish the amount of crystal violet that spray and also avoid touch bleeding, which may occur in close observation of the cancerous lesion. So this technique is only reserved for a suspicious cancerous lesion. This slide shows the appearance of different type of kudos peak pattern. In short, type one refers to normal mucosa and the type two represent non neoplastic or sometimes C cell selected lesion, and the type three or four refers to benign adenoma. Type five usually predict high risk histology or invasive cancer. Therefore, we have to pay special attention to those lesions with such kind of appearance. Nextly, I would like to talk about how invasion death prediction could be made by applying IEE modality. First of all, there are several myths that need to be clarified. Firstly, T1 cancer is not equivalent to stage one cancer and some T1 cancer may have regional lymph node or even distant metastasis. Secondary, some doctor may think that biopsy could provide information and invasion depth to guide treatment, but it is hardly possible to obtain a tissue containing the whole submucosal layer. And some doctor may also think that invasion depth prediction is not necessary and apply the so-called cut and the seep histology approach. Such a blind approach may expose the patient to unnecessary complication and ensuring unnecessary medical expense. And finally, uh, it remains controversial whether digital IE can totally repress diabetes approach. So this slide show the data from your database and you can see that uh, around 10% of T1 cancer actually has a regional or distant lymph node metastasis. So what will happen if T1 cancer is incompletely resected? According to previous Dutch study, the colorectal cancer deaths uh, after incomplete resection or recurrence of T1 cancer could be as high as 40%. And the risk factor include non-pedunculated morphology, large size, or piecemeal resection. So this is my own patient who received endoscopy resection of this lesion with cancer appearance. 
the vertical margin was free, there were lymphovascular invasion by pathology. Because the lesion was very near to the anus, the patient should watch for surveillance rather than additional surgery. Though there was no recurrence in the next year, recurrence eventually still happened after three years of surveillance and uh, uh, eventually uh, <coughs> turned out to be a mortality. So uh, when we see a significant deep invasive appearance under wildlife endoscopy or genetic type three uh, capillary pattern, this is a, a red flag for surgical referral. When we see uh, no significant deep invasive appearance under wildlife endoscopy or see the genetic type 2B, we may further apply staining chromoendoscopy for more detailed diagnosis. And here are some of the crew of invasive cancer under ordinary view. And uh, these include presence of well demarcated depressed area, the 1S plus 2C morphology like a crown. This is actually an upward and a downward growth of central uh, cancer part of depressed area and the stiffness uh, or expansion of the surface or easy breathing and a full convergence. And here are some other example of deep invasive T1 cancers. Previous study has demonstrated that nice classification is not so accurate in predicting invasion death and the guiding treatment. So a recent study demonstrated that genetic classification had a better specificity to predict high-risk histology than by using nice classification. Even so, genetic classification uh, type 2B still contain wide range of histology as you can see here. Previous Japanese study have demonstrated that chromoendoscopy with crystal virus staining could predict invasion death with higher accuracy. A recent study from Japan, um, it was demonstrated that lesion with JNS type 2B pattern could be further restratified by applying chromoendoscopy using the crystal violet, thereby avoiding under treatment or over surgery. And there was also an attempt to further subclassify JNS 2B into low and high irregularity to achieve a higher accuracy in dis discriminating lesion that could be treated endoscopically. And uh, finally, here is a quiz. So uh, very happy to see that most of the audience uh, choose 2A plus 2C. Yes, this is the depressed lesion. So I will uh, summarize all the endoscopic findings after all the question. So what is the NBI capillary pattern of this lesion uh, by nice classification? Please answer. Okay, please show the result.
Okay. Ah, uh, okay. The answer is quite controversial, and uh, almost half of the audience answer nice type two, and the remaining audience answer type three. And uh, sorry, there is no nice type four, but still some audience answer type four. Okay, question three. What is the kudos speed pattern of this region? Ah, okay, sorry. This is um, not six, five I. The lower case, five I, and this is the five N. Okay, please show the answer. Ah, okay. So uh, most of the audience answer type five I and uh, some answer type five N. Okay, the correct answer uh, should be five I. And then the final question, what is your choice of treatment? A, cold snail polypectomy, that this is a small lesion. And B, EMR plus surgery if unfavorable histology. C, ESD, D, surgery. Okay, please show the result. Ah, okay. So most of the audience uh, chose ESD plus surgery if unfavorable histology and the thumb with EMR. Okay. So this lesion actually is a very small one, uh, less than one centimeter. And if you look at, uh, look from the lateral view, you can see an uneven surface. So this is an important clue of um, stiffness uh, implying uh, cancerous change and uh, sometimes deep invasion. So after dye spraying, you can see a very well demarcated depressed area. So this is a 2A plus 2C region. Okay, so this case actually highlights um, the usefulness of JNS classification. So uh, you can see that this is the uh, JNS type 2B uh, capillary pattern with irregular and uh, uneven uh, diameter torturous. And after crystal virus staining, we can see type 5i kudos P pattern was located exactly at the area of uh, uh, depressed portion. And you can see in this small area, this type 5i P pattern is highly irregular. So in such case, we should suspect a deep invasion. But anyway, this lesion is quite small, less than one centimeter and I perform EMR. And eventually this can turn out to be a deep invasive cancer, as you can see here. So this is a very good demonstration uh, that very detailed inspection using IEE is very helpful for determining treatment strategy. Okay, so in summary, Ladies and gentlemen, correct lesion could be evaluated in a systematic way, starting from microscopic characterization and the microscopic characterization applying IE modality. And it is also important to take into consideration uh, the specific uh, uh, patient conditions such as lesion location, comorbidity, or patient preference based on uh, shared decision making. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you so much for your wonderful presentation. Uh, audience maybe can understand the way of characterization. Any comments from panelists? So, 
although time is limited, uh, Professor Chu, once more, please explain the yes. proper use, proper use of uh, indigo carmine, crystal violet, or IE. Okay, so after the popularity of MBI, yes, uh, it is true that the occasion of dye spraying decreased a lot. But in case uh, we see a very fresh lesion, and uh, sometimes you, if you see a uh, uh, dark area surrounding the flat lesion, you should suspect this may be a, a depressed lesion. So I will uh, do the dye spraying. And uh, if you see type 2B, genetic type 2B capillary pattern in the uh, uh, central depressed area, uh, I routinely uh, proceed to uh, crystal virus staining. So the occasion of using crystal virus staining is very rare, but it is very useful because uh, it is very critical for a patient to undergo surgery or just receive uh, endoscopy resection. Yeah, this is my way of practice. Okay, I will introduce one question from audience. How about Mechelen Blue? Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, Dr. Sano had de uh, demonstrated uh, Michelin Blue staining. So actually, uh, I don't have so many experience of uh, using Michelin Blue except for, uh, for endocyto uh, endocytoscope magnifying observation. But I know that in Europe, uh, Michelin Blue staining is uh, much popular, much more popular uh, as an alternative to uh, indigo carmine dye. So I personally do not have so many occasion of using Mesalem Blue. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. Uh, we will Thank move you. to the next presentation. I will introduce next speaker, uh, Professor Yuichi Mori. Uh, he is Associate Professor of Showa University, Nozan Yokohama Hospital. His topic is endocytoscopy. Please go ahead. Well, thank you very much for your kind of introduction, Professor uh, Tanaka, and uh, thank you for the invitation uh, steering committee of WEL. It's my great pleasure to talk about it, endocytoscopy in lower GI. So endocytoscopy is a kind of special endoscope if you compare it with the conventional endoscopies or magnified endoscopies. However, this special endoscope has an exciting potential to change the colonoscopy practice drastically. So let me give, uh, let me uh, provide uh, some talk on this special endoscope for uh, 10 or 20 minutes. So I'd like to uh, uh, introduce three topics today. Uh, first, I'd like to show some general specification of endocytoscope followed by the diagnostic uh, abilities or procedures using endocytoscope. So what is endocytoscope? Actually, endocytoscope or EC allows the contact microscopy at 500 fold magnification. So uh, you can get a, a microscopic image in real time during your endoscopy, which is amazing uh, because the, uh, this kind of cytological view cannot be uh, realized with the conventional endoscopy. And the important thing is the, that the appearance of endoscope is almost same as that of the standard endoscope, as you can see in the left slide. So uh, it's a kind of uh, dream because uh, uh, you can enjoy histopathological evaluation in a real time fashion. So let me introduce the video provided by Olympus Corporation. As you can see, the appearance of the endoscope is almost same as normal endoscope. And after uh, uh, using the labor, uh, you can get a conventional magnifying image in addition to cytological imaging. So as you can see, if you contact the uh, lesion on the tip of the endoscope, you can get a, a real-time cytological image. So uh, this is a summary of what kind of uh, abilities EC or endocytoscope will provide with. Uh, first, you can get, of course, standard endoscopic image, and all, also you can get an image with a magnification power of around 100 times, 
And in addition to these specifications, you can enjoy a real-time psychological evaluation uh, as shown in the right. And uh, uh, how, how you get this kind of images? This is very simple. By just pulling the magnification lever, you can adjust the magnification level and uh, get the appropriate images according to the magnification uh, power. And the important thing is the depth of the observation when you apply the cytoscopic uh, assessment. Uh, honestly speaking, the focus depth is very, very shallow, which is around the 35 micrometer. So actually, you are observing the very, very surface of epithelium. But uh, when it comes to colorectal lesion, uh, I guess the uh, surface uh, histopathological diagnosis of the surface uh, basically reflects the whole pathology. So uh, let me proceed to how we use the endocytoscope in our clinical practice. Uh, it's relatively easy because uh, uh, what you should do is just contact the lesion and pull the lever, that's it. Then you can enjoy this kind of cytological image. And uh, let me introduce the basic function of endocytoscope. Endocytoscope is a very, very special endoscope, but the basic function is almost same as normal endoscopes. Uh, as you can see, the sequel intubation rate was 99% according to a large scale prospective trial. And the insertion time was reported to around five minutes. So I think these uh, parameters are feasible when you consider the implementation of endocytoscope in your clinical practice. So based on this uh, data, uh, we are using endocytal as a normal standard colonoscope in our institution, namely Showa University. And uh, let me introduce how we diagnose the lesion with use of endocytoscope under dye spraying. Uh, you know, there are roughly two ways of enjoying endocytoscope. One is that with use of dye spraying, the other one is using the MBI. So first, dye spraying. So, so firstly, I'd like to uh, introduce how to stain the lesion before the observation. Uh, I'd like to activate a video. Uh, maybe you can see, may not you can, may, maybe you cannot see because of the connection, but the first, Firstly, I, I'd like to wash the lesion to remove the mucus and the spray the methylene blue, uh, which is the uh, concentration of 1%. And the important thing is to wait for a minute uh, before the lesion is well stained. And uh, after washing out the dye solution with use of water jet or water, and then you can, you can, you can observe the lesion with the high magnification power like this. So, so uh, as you may understand, the procedure is a little bit complicated uh, when you compare it with a standard endoscope, but the benefits you will get from endocytoscope is much more than the conventional observation. And uh, this is the specification of the uh, dye solution. Uh, we routinely use the methylene blue as a dye solution and uh, its concentration is uh, basically 1%. And you can use it or make it uh, if you ask the pharmacy uh, to prepare. And the, uh, so the interpretation of image is a little bit challenging when it comes to endocytoscopes. So I'd like to explain how to interpret the, this kind of cytological images. So basically uh, in, the, in the stand mode, uh, we will focus on uh, two factors. One is the nuclei, the other one is lumen. So as you can see in this shimmer, uh, you can find a slit-like stretch for lumen, which is uh, uh, shown as number two. And uh, uh, around the, these slit-like lumens, you can find the blue spots. Actually, these blue spots are regarded as or reported to be nuclei. So these two factors should be focused. And the, this is the typical image of a low-grade adenoma, where you can find a slit-like lumen 
and uh, around the slit like lumen, you can find like, a lot of the nuclei, but uh, actually the size of nuclei is not that big. And when it comes to hyperplastic polyp, the appearance is completely different from that of the adenomas. Uh, uh, if you look at the uh, lumen, uh, which is uh, basically not slit-like, but uh, serrated and a little bit open, and uh, there is basically a lot of uh, small granules around the lumens, uh, which is the uh, typical appearance of hyperplastic polyp. And when it comes to cancer or invasive cancer, the appearance is completely different from, uh, from the pre previously shown two uh, lesions. Uh, actually, uh, there is no uh, lumens clearly identified in this picture. And also you can find a lot of nuclei and also the size of the nuclei differs according to the uh, uh, location. So variety of size and uh, uh, irregularly arranged uh, uh, location are the uh, typical uh, characteristics of the endocytoscopic image of invasive cancer. So this information uh, will be very helpful to uh, effectively differentiate the invasive cancer from the adenomas or hyperplastic polyps. And this is the EC classification, which can be used routinely during the examination. Uh, based on this classification, we can uh, predict the uh, histopathology of the lesion in uh, real-time fashion. So let me show the uh, interesting videos uh, in which you can find uh, two images. Uh, on the left side, uh, you can enjoy the image of hyperplastic polyp while uh, you can see the image of SSAP or cesserated lesion on the left, on the right. So the difference between these two images is the uh, size of lumen. As you can see on the right, uh, the size of the lumen of SSAP or SSL is much larger than that of hyperplastic polyp. So you can differentiate or identify SSL or SSAP from hyperplastic polyp very easily with use of endocytoscopy. And the differentiation of adenoma is also uh, not so challenging if you use this modality, if, but uh, it's a little bit challenging if you only use the white light endoscope because of the similarity between these two polyps, but the uh, I would say the uh, uh, cytological difference between these two polyps was apparent if you look at the pictures. So endocytoscope is very, very beneficial in identifying the neoplastic change as well. And uh, we have already conducted a pre uh, multiple prospective studies. And the, these studies illustrated that the accuracy of the histopathological prediction is over 94% or something like that. So, so it is really a reliable modality if you use it in an appropriate way. And the, I think the important thing is the additional value of using EC or endocytoscope to pit pattern diagnosis or MBI based diagnosis. As we learned today, uh, I guess the, the, the potential of the NBI magnification and the potential of pit pattern diagnosis are huge and very, very uh, reliable. So I guess the space of, uh, uh, of EC is a little bit limited in terms of the diagnosis of some mucosa invasion, but uh, I would say it can provide a, a high confidence in diagnosing a little bit difficult lesion. So uh, I, we, in our institution, we try to use endocytoscopy whenever uh, we detect a lesion suspicious of invasion to some mucosal layer. And uh, we, we would say that the uh, use of AC is really beneficial to increase your confidence level. So let, let me uh, proceed to the uh, last session, last topic, namely MBI. So you can enjoy the, our, uh, uh, magnified vascular pattern with use of endocytoscopy. So it's uh, much more, much easier uh, than the chromo-based endocytoscopy because, well, what you should do is just push the MBI button and touch the lesion. 
then you can enjoy the microvascular pattern like this. And uh, this is the uh, classic appearance of the hypoplastic polyp under MBI based encytoscopy, where you can find a uh, uh, very few number of vessels. And the, uh, this is the uh, video, I think. So, so, so you can find the uh, uh, vascular pattern of adenoma, uh, which is a little bit. Uh, thicker than that of the hypoplastic polyp. And finally, this is the appearance of the vessels of uh, invasive cancer uh, in which you can find the interaction of the vessels and the thickness of the vessels. So the appearance of the invasive cancer under endocytoscopic observation is very similar to uh, that of the magnification under MBI, uh, but uh, you can get a confident, uh, confidence I'll uh, 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 diagnose it with the high confidence in with, if you use this kind of modality. So this is the endocytoscopic uh, classification under the NBI mode. And you can get a, a higher accuracy uh, with the use of this modality. And the, uh, I, I can understand that the interpretation of endocytoscopic image is a uh, little bit challenging if you compare with the uh, standard endoscopic images. So uh, we have been trying to implement the AI technology for interpretation of endocytoscopic images. Uh, uh, finally, I'd like to uh, present a piece of our work. So this is the AI for endocytoscopy. And with use of this system, uh, you can predict the a histopathology of the polyps in a real-time fashion with the aid of AI. So basically, you don't require to learn anything before use of the endocytoscope if you have a chance to use the, this kind of system. And also, we are now working on the possibility to predict the invasive cancer with use of AI combined with endocytoscopy. And so, this is very critical because the uh, identification of invasive cancer is much more challenging compared to the identification of neoplastic change. And I, I guess this is the way to go. And uh, this is the uh, problem to be addressed in the future. And uh, this is the availability of endo, uh, endo brain uh, or uh, the AI system designed for endocytoscopy. Uh, basically endo brain for endocytoscopy is uh, distributed in uh, Asian countries. So if you have a chance uh, to use it or uh, would like to use it, uh, please contact the uh, Olympus Corporation. They can, they can give you some information about uh, availability. So uh, let me proceed to the case presentation. Uh, I have prepared uh, three cases. Uh, this, these cases will be very beneficial to learn how to interpret the endocytoscopic images. So first case, uh, this is a case. Uh, it's a really a small lesion. Uh, I guess the size is around five or six millimeter in diameter. And the lesion is located at sigma column. So this is a question. Please vote your answer. Uh, the options are hypoplastic polyp, SSL, adenoma, slightly invasive T1 cancer, or deeply invasive T1 cancer. Please vote your prediction of this lesion. So uh, could you please uh, open up the voting result? Thanks. So uh, it's very interesting re results because the uh, answer uh, differs uh, very much. And the, I think that 40% of the people uh, predict this lesion as adenomas. All right, so let me proceed to the more detailed observation. Uh, uh, in this, these images, you can find a modified MBI images. Uh, maybe you can notice something because you have already learned a lot of things in the previous lecture about uh, magnifying MBI. Then 
Uh, this is a pit pattern analysis. All right, so let me proceed to the uh, endocytoscopic images. All right, uh, these two images are endocytoscopic uh, view. Uh, on the left, you can find the vessels under the MBA mode, and on the right, you can find a nuclei. All right, so again, uh, the question is a little bit uh, tweaked, but uh, uh, I'd like to ask you what kind of treatment you will do for this lesion or for this patient. The options are called polypectomy, hot polypectomy, EMR, ESD, or surgery. Please vote your opinion. In 10 seconds, uh, please open up the results. Okay, so it's very interesting. I, I guess most of people prefer doing uh, endoscopic resection such as EMR or ESD. And 10% uh, of the uh, participants prefer doing surgery instead of endoscopic resection. It's really interesting answer. Thank you very much for voting your fantastic opinion. So uh, let me proceed to the answer section. So, Honestly speaking, we conducted surgery without uh, use of any endoscopic procedure because we predict this lesion as a highly invasive corrected cancer. And the, this is the pathological report. According to this report, this lesion is actually a submucosal invasive cancer which embedded into the submucosal layer by 20, 50 micrometer. Fortunately, there is no lymphometastasis. However, lymphovascular invasion was confirmed. So uh, I guess the uh, doing surgery is a kind of nice option. And of course you can do EMR or ESD before doing the endoscope some, uh, surgery, but the, you, should do, you should keep in mind that this lesion is a, a kindly uh, some of the cancer uh, uh, during you doing your treatment uh, during endoscopy. And this lesion is also assessed, was assessed with use of AI. Now, let me show. So this is the uh, uh, appearance of the uh, surface of the lesion, uh, where you can find a variety of nuclei. And the, finally, AI show the possibility of invasive cancer with a 99% probability. So this was really helpful for us to determine the treatment strategy. And uh, also uh, this is a really uh, nice modality if you, have, uh, you don't have uh, uh, any confidence in uh, advanced endoscopic diagnosis. So this is a case, too. I guess the time is limited. So I'd like to finish up the presentation by explaining the, uh, this case to lesion. So this is the white light image. Maybe you can find the presence of the uh, lesion in the center of the image. And uh, this is the uh, magnified NBI image. Then this is the endocytoscopic image. Please note that the lesion is located at incident colon, not rect sigmoid or rectum. All right, so could you please vote your prediction? Now you have a five options, hyperplastic polyp, SSL adenoma, slightly T1 cancer, deeply T1 cancer. And uh, please vote your prediction of this lesion. Okay, uh, could you please open up the results? Thank you very much. Oh, interestingly, uh, half of the participants uh, predicted this lesion as SSL, and uh, some people uh, predict this lesion as adenoma. All right, let me proceed to the answer. So the answer is that I, this is a hypoplastic polyp. 
so I, I guess the time is limited. So I'd like to finish my presentation uh, with this slide. So as you can see, uh, um, you can find a big difference between a hyperplastic polyp and SSA or SSL in terms of hyper, uh, uh, endocytoscopic imaging. And uh, on the left, you can find uh, a narrow lumen. However, you can find a uh, uh, broader lumen in the SSAP. So in a previous uh, case, namely case two, uh, you can find uh, uh, narrowed lumen, which is a, a, a classic appearance of hyperplastic polyp. So with the, with the use of this information, you can correctly predict the uh, presence of, of hyperplastic polyp, and uh, also you can identify SSA. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, kind attention, and uh, uh, we hope that uh, you are going to join our ENDO 2022 uh, in Japan. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your wonderful presentation. Uh, I have one question, so please uh, answer in brief. Uh, as you told, uh, the diagnosis, di uh, observation depth of diagnosis of endocytoscopy is very shallow. So is there no problem to diagnose the uh, uh, bottom-up growth type in grand neoplasia, such as uh, dysplasia in UC or SSL with mild atypia? Uh, thank you very much for a fantastic question, uh, Professor Tanaka. It's a really critically relevant question. And uh, to make a long story short, uh, this is a limitation of endoscopic observation, including endocytoscopy and possibly uh, MBI or a pit pattern diagnosis, because the on the surface of this kind of challenging region, uh, you cannot find any change basically. Uh, so, so I guess uh, with regard to uh, 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 bottom up uh, nature of the neoplasm in correct them cannot be correctly identified from the information of the surface. So uh, it's very challenging. Maybe we should do, uh, uh, we should find a new way or the more attractive way to solve this problem. Thanks so much. One more question uh, from audience. There is a uh, disc of oncologic behavior of methylene blue. What do you think? Well, that's a nice question. Uh, if you look at the uh, previously published papers, uh, there are uh, two opinions. One, one shows that the uh, risk of the uh, oncological uh, adverse uh, effect, because it will, it may be uh, changing the, some structure of DNA. But on the other hand, if you apply a, a limited amount of methylene blue, it will play nothing in terms of the change of DNA or uh, something like that. And the uh, data of the uh, uh, controversial data was obtained from the animal study. Uh, in which you, you they use a lot of lot of lot of lot of huge amount of methylene blue to to show the change of the DNA DNA pattern or carcinogenesis. genesis. So if you use the uh, 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 appropriate amount of methylene blue, there is no worry in terms of the adverse event. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very I, much. We will move to next presentation. Uh, next speaker is. Uh, Professor Enking uh, Ringu, uh, he is uh, now president of Chinese Society of Digestive Endoscopy. His topic is ESD in lower GI. Please go ahead. The moderator. My speech is endoscopic systemic cause of incision in lower GI. I will talk from eight S factor from below. The first background. This is a map of the colorectal cancer in the world. The colorectal cancer is directly third in terms of incidence, but the second in terms of mortality. The ESD is a good chance for early study of colorectal cancer and the plots. For me, cause of incision, this is the first stage. The first one is a pre EMR. The second one is a EMR. And the ESD stage 
and as well as the address of underscore technical stage. But like, yes, the indication. The yes, the indication includes the new prism that is uh, include that the cause a new prism is a lower or high graded tumor in situ in intermocular cancer and uh, some cause of inflation cancer number of less than 1,000 millimeter. millimeter. And this is the laboratory, laboratory spread tumors and the superficial reconciliation and others. For conductor ESD, it is the standard method for early conductor neoplasm that can reach the end block resection and includes post assessment and a similar outcome to second. It can decrease the incidence and mortality of this. This is a ESD method. That first one is a typical ESD method. That is uh, uh, included that with a partial marginal insection and to some inconsistization. And the other one is the circular insection to some inconsistization. And the second method that is that the endoscopic some inconsistent tunnel decision. And the result that is assisted by ESD, we can use the, the traction assisted or rot assisted. This is a typical case of the ESD. First, we found the lesion and the marking and the circumference incision and decision of the specimen. And this is the, the method of endoscopic submucosal channel decision. The first one, A, let's look at the lesion. That is an acceptable channel. It's a channel and the decision. This and uh, finished the case. And this is the ESTD for conduct relation. Look at this, this is the relation. And that is a separate the channel here. And this is for a large piece of, 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 of tumor. This is completely removed. And this is assisted by the traction. We use the clips and the future traction relations. Now look at here this traction. And now we uh, easily to find uh, some because of tissue and uh, easily to perform the decision. And this is the video that is uh, uh, look. This is this is the LS, LST tumor. Now the use the clips and uh, check in the tissue. Look at here, it's yearly exposed the sunny cause of tissue and uh, perform the ESD. Let's look at that, let's take it easy. This is uh, for the sky, the lesion in the sky. This is the sky. First one, we mark in the margin and the submergence in section and the traction, the lesion. And the decision. This is the specimen. This, this is the, the specimen. Now, another method that is magnetic echo guided ESD for for echo LESD, LSD. That is the tragic magnet echo magnet. This is the props in the in the outcome rival. And this is the use tag the magnet where fixed on the lesion. At the sum of the sum of the two was full exposed and includes the artificial ulcer with kicks. And this is the resection lesions. This is Professor Felix demo the robot assisted ESD. And maybe there's a future we will use this kind of machines. And this is the now method that's just for the uh, vector lesions. That is a treasure platform for the expression of a complex vector, prop, vector props. This is the ESD specimen heterogen. That is the size of the specimen <coughs> was about a four centimeter. And the histological examination for the tubal values are normal. For typical, typical cases, and this is the, the props, uh, as I said, the uh, library uh, straight tumor around the, uh, the uh, four walls in the circle. So this is uh, spent about uh, 200 mm millimeter and without advanced evers. This is a 
performed by the Nanton Hospital. About the non term outcome of ESD, the N block resection of 90%, and the N block plus I0 resection is 74.5. The local recurrence is 2%. And the, the, third, the, the three under five year survival, that's about 100. And this is picture is uh, published by the uh, Professor Lee, Zhao Lee. And that recorded rents, that's a simple point. 7.7 percent, and the five and three and five years disease special survival is 92.2 percent. About the complications, the complication of yesterday in the corner that is recognized that bleeding enema is a proliferation. About the bleeding, the yesterday is 0 to 15.6 post operation, post operation, and then. Second and uh, significant bleeding during the ESD. And th uh, this is the structure for the ESD. The structure is uh, the risk factor that's uh, more than 90%. The second for immune spatial resection. For this is the case we performed, that is the first ESD. This is the, uh, the second for this lesions. And uh, after ESD, that is the structure. That's a structure. So we use the bloom by patients. When we follow up, that we find the recurrence, that's isolation, and we use the ESD. And at the same time, we use the glue. That is uh, after uh, the brain dentition, and this is the uh, structure is uh, better. How to encode it? How to uh, encode the show the, the more detail of the, the bleeding during the endoscopic uh, resection? Mm. So I published the, the Classification ERB endoscopic resection bleeding. That is the uh, the first one. The ERB is zero. That's a low bleeding. That's a during the process low bleeding. And the ERB control and the ERB uncontrolled. ERB control that means the bleeding can be controlled during by an endoscopy. And then it's divided to <coughs> control one and two and three. And the one is minimal bleeding. It can be easily controlled by endoscopy without effect post operative vital sign and uh, with no need of uh, the transmission. And the ERP control three, that is the hundred bleeding can be controlled and then those be with the need of blood with the need of a blood transfusion into or post operative. The endoscopic resection <coughs> bleeding controls uh, two that is between the one and the three. For the ERP uncontrolled cases that are uncontrolled bleeding and endoscopy. So the patient must be treated by the surgery or vessel and will analyze therapy. Uh, this is the picture that uh, look at the, the ERB three grand include the five subgram. That is the ERB zero, the ERB control one, ERB control two, ERB control three, and the ERB uncontrolled cases. For the perforation, we use the muscular prepare injury to classify the, 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 the perforation or not. That is, uh, muscular therapy is three grand in the five sub, sub grants. The muscular therapy injury is zero. There's no injury of the muscular therapy during the ESD. And the, the muscular therapy injury, that is partial injury, injury of the muscular therapy muscle without the full perforation. That's divided to the muscular therapy Injury A, that's the partial injury of muscle prepare with the gas inside of the cavity, but not to protrude out of the cavity after of the pressurization. And the muscle prepare injury B, I, injury B, that's a partial injury of the muscle prepare where the gas inside of the cavity protrude out of the cavity after pressurization. Muscle prepare perforation, that means full sickness injury. And the muscular prepare injury perforation A, that is means that the perforation can be closed and endoscopy. And the perforation B, that is the perforation that cannot be closed and endoscopy and must be treated by the surgery. Look at these pictures. Although this is in the esophagus, but look at here the muscular prepare zero and the muscular prepare injury A, B. And the muscular B, that is we can look at the gas in the uh, medium. And uh, that's the muscular prepare 
perforation A, let's look at it here, that's perforation we can close by the glyphs. And the muscular perforation, perforation this, for these lesions, and that uh, cannot close. And the endoscopy, so this cancel case is performed the operation. And this is uh, uh, the uh, muscular perforation uh, injury perforation A. Look at here, this is the perforation, and uh, we closed and use the, the uh, Oh, use the OTSA closed. And this is a, the, the, the perforation. When we look at it, that's, a, that's a, we just use this. We just use the clips that can close the, the perforation. For the local recurrence factors, the local recurrence factors, that is uh, four factors. That is the first one, pseudo resection in ESD, and uh, length respiratory tumor larger than four centimeter diameter. And uh, no pre treatment magnification, maybe. And less than, for doctor, less than 10 years are determined in endoscopic resections. For additional surgery after ESD, and uh, uh, this kind of patient that should be performed endoscopy after ESD. The first one is a poor differentiated signature ring cell carcinoma, mucinous and carcinoma, and uh, some cause of invasion, more than 1,000, and a positive vascular infratage. And tumor body grade two or three, and uh, the positive vitreal margarine. That is, uh, all these cases should be performed, uh, yes, uh, uh, operation, surgery operation. And the DSD is a kind of method of super minimal invasive surgery. But a five year survival is similar between a ESD and a surgery. This is a, a, a report that is a five years. Overall survival rate was 96.7% and 98.7% uh, uh, in the ESD and the survey group, respectively. That's no difference. So, no matter ESD, EMR, ESE, is a method for the tumor resection in SATI. And this kind of method is the incision of normal tissue from the nearest of the margin and the deeps of the tumor to cure the disease. The effect is similar to the surgery operation. Some super minimal invasive surgery aim to cure the disease while prevent perceiving the integration of human organ anatomy. So yes, it is a kind of a method of super minimal invasive survey. That's the difference between the, the SMIS and the MIS and the survey. We just look at this traditional surgery, minimal invasive surgery, super minimal invasive surgery. And that's the model of the cure disease. The first one, the, this column and this column are the same. That is the uh, resection lesion and the, this and the person or whole organ at the same time to cure the disease, and the, that leading the change of the normal organ structure. So from a traditional surgery to minimal invasive surgery, that's this model is a no change. But to the super minimal invasive surgery. That's a resection lesion in situ to cure the disease. But at the same time, it's for the perceptual integrate of the hemorrhagic structure. Look at this picture. This traditional surgery, this is minimal invasive surgery. For example, this is the ESD cases performed. Uh, so the, we, we, we can see that is the uh, super minimal invasive surgery. Then, same is the future stage of the, of the surgery operation. In the near future, most lesions can be resected or drained without the effect of the changes of the normal organ structure. The, the medicine goes to the stage of the super minimal invasive surgery. The treatment of disease, digestive disease is just a branch of application of the stents. The stents can be also applied to the disease of other systems. And the same to the minimal invasive surgery. Super minimal invasive surgery is a kind of treatment method and the story should go for the different diseases such as neuronal system disease, nerve disease, needle action, surgery, and so on. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much for a wonderful presentation. Uh, unfortunately, time is behind. So I will move to last presentation. Thank you so much. Last presentation is a case discussion and a quiz. Presenter is Professor 
Bion from Korea. He's professor of Assam Medical Center, University of Assam College of Medicine, Seoul. Please go ahead. Okay. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, do you see my slide? No, not yet. No? Not yet? Uh, okay. Perfect. Do you see now? Yes, thank you. Okay, okay. Uh, because uh, we are already e e e behind of uh, uh, scheduled schedule, uh, I will show you uh, only one case, uh, although I prepared two cases today. Okay, so uh, this is a uh, uh, case, a male, 49 years old, and standing colon. You can see here uh, an about uh, 12 or 13 millimeter sized polyp, white light image. And this is a narrow band image. And this is a closer view. And uh, this is more uh, uh, a closer view and uh, a little magnified view. And um, here, uh, this is uh, the magnified view of uh, this portion. And uh, let's see the uh, detailed view of this area here. And this is a chrome endoscopy e e picture and here and this area uh, is like this so what is uh, your endoscopic diagnosis uh, of this polyp please uh, show the poll please vote uh i'm sorry uh this alexandra Alexandra, this yes, is not I will. The, That's yeah. correct. Let me check. The third uh, question, maybe. There you go. Please vote again. Okay, uh, please vote. Okay, so uh, most voters uh, chose uh, number C, a cystic region with uh, dysplasia. So uh, let's see e e together. Um, uh, on the MBI image, uh, there are two uh, distinctive different areas. Here uh, on the red uh, colored area, you can see if a little flat morphology with indistinctive border. And uh, there is uh, absence of uh, prominent uh, surface vessels. And uh, you can see some dark uh, spots inside the crypts. And here uh, on, in the uh, blue lined area, uh, the gross morphology is 1S polypoid. And um, you can see a thick uh, dark brown vessels and uh, regular and relatively well-oriented tubular and reticular pattern here. And uh, on the uh, chrome endoscopy uh, pictures, uh, you can see also uh, the, the flat morphology here. And uh, in this area, uh, the CUDA P pattern uh, is uh, 2 and 2 and 2 OP pattern here. And uh, in this polypoid area, uh, the P pattern is mainly a type 4 and some areas uh, maybe type uh, uh, 3L. So um, there can be a two uh, different two different uh, pathologies in this case. And um, I uh, performed uh, EMR and uh, a final histology it was a cystic serrated lesion with high grade dysplasia. 
So uh, the final answer is uh, cis-accelerated lesion with uh, dysplasia. And um, several uh, clinical and endoscopy predictors of dysplasia in cis-accelerated lesion have been uh, reported. Uh, old age and uh, larger size uh, increase the risk of uh, uh, dysplasia in cis-accelerated lesion. And uh, uh, presence of uh, uh, cis morphology, uh, that is uh, 1S uh, morphology. And uh, could a PIP pattern uh, three, four, and five uh, suggests uh, the possibility of uh, combined dysplasia and or uh, cancer in cis-accelerated lesion. Uh, this is another study that uh, showed the similar results. Uh, there is a uh, cis polypoid component here. And the flat area here uh, shows a type two uh, and or a type two OP pattern. And the CSR area here uh, shows mainly type 4 uh, P pattern here. So these features are exactly the same as the endoscopic features of uh, my uh, case uh, presented just before. So uh, this is the end of uh, uh, my presentation of uh, the first case. And this is the second case. But um, as I said, uh, uh, in the beginning, uh, because of time limitation, I will stop here and I will show you uh, this case uh, in the next uh, opportunity. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much, Professor Bion. Next time, please show this case from you. Sure, sure. I, I have one comment. Uh, the flat area of this region uh, accompanied by so-called white opaque substance was do you agree? Yes. So, so maybe difficult to diagnose by NBI magnification. But angio carmine dye spraying view is very clear. Mm. Thank you so much. Okay. Any comment from panelists? No? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. In final, uh, we will have uh, closing special remarks from uh, Professor Ray, please. Thank you. Uh, I think it had been a very useful and wonderful morning for us in Europe, afternoon for you in uh, Asia. Uh, from the Professor Ponchon presentation, you know, uh, there are two points. Uh, one point that NBI, like the gold standard for detection, and the second point is that TXI need to have more study for the clinical benefit. Uh, Yoshida uh, from Japan show clearly what I said at the beginning of my presentation. By the time being, whatever you use, Fuji film or Olympus, you have exactly the same technology, you have the same result. So when we are talking about NICE, about GNET, it's applied for all uh, Fujifilm technology. Uh, as you know, uh, Yasushi Sano always is a, a bright presentation. We show clearly the impact of GNET, that is a uh, uh, for Sano, it's a gold standard for, for some years, and I think we should learn from him and the benefits of GNET, especially for nice two difficult cases. Uh, Professor Sandul Eanu uh, make a marvelous uh, demonstration how to, we, to classify uh, lateral spreading tumor, and especially with the new classification haze. And uh, it was well demonstrated with a marvelous image. Uh, of course, uh, uh, Professor Pew from Taiwan uh, showed clearly uh, for characterization, uh, most of us now dropped a uh, chemical uh, tool uh, using only NBI or BLI. But in some cases, it showed clearly that we should use uh, again, uh, indigo carmine or for Asia, crazy violet, what is not uh, uh, possible to use in, in Europe. Um, 
Yoshi Mori, uh, as usual, show us the benefits of endocytoscopy. And we could raise the question, is in the near future, uh, we should work like in uh, Showa University with a colonoscope able to do the endocytoscopy uh, at the same time. And definitely uh, we have a uh, image enhanced endoscopy, but the cytoscopy had something for benefits of a patient. It was, as usual, a marvelous presentation. And uh, uh, Professor Lingu make a break from uh, uh, image enhanced endoscopy uh, to surgery and uh, it developed what we hope will be uh, accepted in WO subcommittee, uh, the uh, super minimal invasive surgery as a new concept for extending all possibility of endoscopic treatment for EMR, ESD uh, to uh, full resection. And finally, uh, thanks for uh, uh, Jason Young from Scoria for his nice quick, but we know him and he will show us some more quick in uh, another uh, possibility. And finally, uh, first of all, I should thank uh, Shinji Kanaka because uh, he make, he's an old friend. He make a very nice program, very attractive. And I hope people enjoy this program uh, online and on YouTube. And uh, with uh, Isao Tajiri, uh, Long time ago, we decided to develop the ADEC uh, concept. And you know, this morning, this ADEC worked well, especially with quiz, because even with some experts, uh, we understand they have some misunderstanding. The quiz is a good way to really uh, understand what people learn from our demonstration. And uh, I, I thank uh, Isao Tajiri to support this ADEC courses for many years. And, uh, Finally, uh, I tell you for all, uh, see you in Kyoto uh, in May 2022. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone.